Well, it's time. Yes, indeed, it's time. Everyone, it's time. Pull up a chair. It's time to get down to the business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. Glad to be back here again with you all on the program that laid the foundation upon which all of your red pill, MGTOW, high value posers, alpha male wannabes, and all others have stolen, ripped off everything that they got it from. This is the place here. Glad to be with you all this evening. Uh, My voice is a little hoarse right now, but don't worry. We are going to get through this and to this, and certainly you want me to do that as well. It's going to be essential for you because we need to go ahead and cover this. A lot of folks talk about these things and they speak in vague generalities or they're guessing their way through it and it doesn't go very well. But an event happened recently that I just couldn't ignore. I couldn't overlook it. And it was essential that I go ahead and stop what I was doing here. And by the way, for all the rest of you who are listening here live, I want to thank you all for joining us. Make sure you share this program, share this program, share this program. You're definitely going to want to do that. So by all means, you're going to want to share this program so other people can hear this because it's going to hurt a lot of feelings. And the reason it's going to hurt a lot of feelings is because this speaks to a fundamental truth in life. Ladies, if there's something that you've learned, and let me go ahead and turn this down a little bit. I'm, sp- I'm spiking a little bit. Back off my level some. I made some changes, so uh, bear with me here while we get this together. But ladies, there comes a time when you gotta exit the casino. There comes a time when it's time for you to cash out. And unfortunately, in the society that we've been in, we have catered to the female ego to the point that we told them that... They never have to worry about that. That they will always have, they will get to leave the casino when they choose to. And if they choose to never leave, that's okay. There's always going to be some, the man you want, the person you want to be with, the life you want to have is waiting on you. Why? It's waiting for when you get ready to go get it. It'll just be sitting there on a park bench, sitting around, waiting and waiting and waiting for you to show up and it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made it doesn't matter how many bad things you've done it doesn't matter how many selfish acts you've committed it doesn't matter how badly you run yourself down there is a winner waiting for you if you are a female we have played into the damn fantasy talk so much we've taught them that if you if you want it there is a winner waiting for you for the rest of your life. Doesn't matter when you're ready to come off the bench and get in the game, there's a winner waiting for you. There's a winner waiting to you. And that's going to be something in particular here that we're going to go ahead and cover here. So on tonight's program here, what it was is that we were dealing with a situation here, and if if you haven't seen it here, we're going to be covering this a little bit in depth here tonight. And I just couldn't help but to speak on this. 50 Cent, I guess at this point, former rapper, television producer at this point. 50 Cent, his ex from a long time ago, was saying was saying some things here. And, you know, um, it's just one of those things where Most of you, your exes move on and whatnot. But the problem is Vivica can't move on because Vivica never did better. Life for Curtis 50 Cent Jackson got better. Fellas, he is a textbook example of why you have to pursue upgrading yourself. You have to pursue improving yourself. You have to pursue empowering yourself. Everything else that you want is simply a side effect of you raising your own value. Don't chase women. 
Chase power, wealth, and influence. Don't chase women. And 50 Cent never lost his mission. He never lost his drive. He never lost his focus. He could get another Vivica. But could Vivica get another 50 Cent? That's the moral of the story. Here they are, what, almost two decades later? And the bottom line is, time has borne out exactly what we warned about that 50 Cent was able to get another Vivica. Actually, he's probably able to get a little bit better. Has Vivica been able to acquire another 50 Cent? Just understand, folks, a woman never forgets when she's been downgraded. She never forgets it. She never excuses it because she always believes that she has a divine right. She is entitled to a better life and that a man is supposed to give that to her. Therefore, if you are a man of value, of power, of resources, of ability, understand something that all your relationships, every single relationship you're in is going to end well. It doesn't matter whether you leave or she leaves. You will always be happy with the relationship because you will always be in a position of power. This is what these other folks don't talk about. I don't talk about dating. I don't give a damn about dating. I don't care about relationships like that except relationship dynamics and power dynamics. That is it. That is it. And fellas, if you want to know the real way to get over relationships quickly, become a valuable man. Become a man of income, status, influence. That is how you make sure you get over it quickly. Why? Because you're always reassured. You're never questioning if the problem was you. But if you question your value in a relationship, then you're asking yourself, well, the problem might have been me. Maybe I need to change some things. And maybe you do. Maybe you need to see about the fact that maybe you're not as valuable as you probably should be. So in this article here, boy, it I, I'm going to read some of it for you here because man, oh man, I, 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 I got to talk about why this is so interesting. Now, the article here from Hot 97, Vivica Fox responds to Cuban Link calling her elder amid 50 Cent drama. First of all, there is no drama. What the hell are they talking about? There is no drama, but all right. Vivica Fox will always have a special love for 50 Cent. The actress made that super clear earlier during an interview with vlogger Vlad TV. Vivica said, quote, I love that I, the love that I had for him and still to this day will always, he was the love of my life. I will admit that without any reservations, he will always have a special place in my heart. Vivica mentioned the relationship ended because they went public, quote, way too fast. 50 Cent is dating an entrepreneur slash model who goes by the name Cuban Link. Cuban responded with a heart face emoji and a violin emoji. Cuban left the comment under the Shade Room's post about Vivica's interview. Vivica clapped back and checked Cuban. Vivica said, quote, Well, this is getting good because I tried to post three times on Shade Room. Now, Cuban Link, what that clip didn't show was that I said he now has a hot girlfriend and I'm happy for him. So stay in your bag, boo. Don't get nervous. I'm good. Wink emoji, tongue out money emoji, queen emoji. 50 Cent replied and said he's not bothered. He also said he thinks they went public too soon. Vivica posted a throwback picture with 50 Cent and it had the internet buzzing. In the caption, she wrote, TGIF darlings, FBF moments, take a look. Ladies, how many of you are posting pictures of the dude that you were with 20 years ago? 
just out of curiosity for anybody who says that's okay, that's normal, it's no problem. By the way, if you don't think she is having some seller's remorse, if you don't think she's having some regrets, by the way, all the ladies listening to me right now, how many of you are posting pictures of the man you were with 20 years ago? Because if the height of your abilities and the height of where you at was 20 years ago, uh, that's something to remember. Just thought we'd keep that in mind. Ladies, how many of you are posting pictures of your boyfriend from 20 years ago? For anybody who's going to try to say that's normal and that's okay. All right, just checking. Now, to go on to say that Cuban made comments online about Vivica being old. Cuban also said she has to, quote, respect her elders. Vivica responded and said, getting older is a blessing. Check out the exchange. So, this is just one of those things. Uh, Vivica, I'm sorry, uh, Cuban Link had responded, stop, y'all. Let's respect our elders. To which Vivica then posts some pictures of herself back when she was with 50 and 20 years younger. And she said, excuse me, darlings, the elder queen is dropping a gem. Getting older is a blessing and a privileged. I'm still keeping it tight and right. Black ladies rock. Black Ladies rock. Now, one of the things that I don't like when they do articles like this, I'm going to tell y'all, one of the things I really don't like is when they do not do something as simple as post what their ages are. Because I think it would be real nice and I think it's real helpful if they would actually do that. And it's amazing at any other time they would be posting those things, but they're not posting it here. Vivica Fox is 56 years old. Let me just remind you here, today, Vivica Fox is 56 years old. While she's talking about keeping it tight and right, baby, well, how everything's jiggly at 56. I mean, 56 years old. And talking about, I'm keeping it tight and right, okay? And I'm not throwing shade, I'm really not. I just wanted to post a picture of her from Vlad. This is a picture from when she was on Vlad. By the way, fair use, Vlad. I know he's a fan. 56 years old. And it's good to have him in front of the camera, because, you know, you, you can't hide as much when you're sitting in front of the camera, so... Eh, a lot, lot looks a little different. Now, for comparison, 50 Cent is 45. I want you to understand that. 50 Cent is 45 years old. Vivica is 56. 50 Cent is 45. 11 years younger than her. 45. Understand that. 45. That's something to keep in mind there. He's 45. Now, once you understand that, then you understand what the issue is. Think about him at the time. Think about him at the time. 45, he was 11 years younger than her. 11 years younger. Why do you think that, why do you think she's upset about that? It was okay at the time. It was okay at the time. It was okay at the time. Well, yes, because at the time she was winning. Situation done changed. Circumstances have changed. And that's what I want to talk about here tonight is ladies. 
there comes a point in time. There comes a point in time when the young lionesses force out the old. We talk about this with the men, with the males, but there comes a point in time when the young lionesses shove out the old. Think about that. The young lionesses force out the old ones. Ladies, you can't just sit there forever. You can't sit there forever. You think if you're going to sit there just for 20 or 30 years and then a man's just going to be sitting around. They're just going to be waiting in the wings for you to show up or that you are so hot and so special that you got a one percenter, you will get another one. They're just waiting in the wings. Well, there's probably a reason that she thought that. In the DJ Vlad interview, by the way, listen to what Vivica says about herself compared to 50 Cent. Listen to what she says about themselves, about the both of them at the time. Performing thing and who he is as a, as a man. So I met Curtis because I remember when I first talked to him, I was like, so what do I call you? He was like, Curtis, that's my name. I said, okay, cool. But for my birthday, he flooded filled my entire house with my favorite flowers, which were Casablancas and gardenias. Mm. And literally a van pulled up with flowers. Like they kept bringing this stuff. I was like, more, more, <laughs> more. Okay. So he's very generous and very kind and a gentleman. Well, and at the time, Get Rich or Die Trying was out. Yes. And it was the biggest thing in music. Yes. Period of any genre. Yes. The album goes diamond. Yes he comes in and completely takes over the game. Right. And then now he's got, you know, you connected to him. And I remember it was the, the VMAs. Yes. And you had that dress on. Yeah. That dress. Wow. Yes. All that in a bag of chips. All that. Design. You hear how Vlad sits up here and blows their heads up. He knows they're so ego starved. He knows that they're so easily impressed and easily flattered. Take a look at how he's blowing her head up and she just, she's just lapping it up by Randy Rom, who I made sure he, he approved it and we coordinated our outfits. So now you guys are a public thing. Right. Did that put a lot of pressure on the relationship? Yes. Explain. Well, I was already Vivica Fox, you know, from Independence Day, this and a third. And he now is becoming this huge mega rap star um, who is crossing over with in the club. And I was used to fame, you know. Um. Wow, do you hear the arrogance on her? I just have to point it out. Do you hear the arrogance? Well, I was already Vivica Fox. And? What does that mean? I was already Vivica Fox. And he was becoming, wait a minute, in, Vlad literally just told her that in the club that went diamond. She talking about he was becoming this mega rapper. So diamond isn't enough. So she, she's literally telling you that her being Vivica Fox back during Independence Day, which by the way, she wasn't starring in, co-starring ma'am. She, I was already Vivica Fox and he was just went diamond. So she's talking like going diamond is less significant than being Vivica Fox. I want y'all to understand that's literally what she's saying here. Well, I was Vivica Fox and he was becoming significant. He, the man just told you he went diamond. Diamond, not platinum, diamond. Well, yeah, but I'm still Vivica Fox. I was still Vivica Fox. Well, I was already Vivica Fox, you know, from Independence Day, this and a third. And he now is becoming this huge mega rap star um, who is crossing over with in the club. And I was used to fame, you know. Um, and the, the main thing that what killed the relationship was that we just went way too public, way too fast. Um, the love that 
I had for him and still to this day um, will always like he was the love of my life. I will admit that without any reservations. Um, he will always have a very special place in my heart. Um, All right. I just want to say very briefly here to the ladies listening to me here tonight. I just want to ask an objective question, if I can, to the ladies listening. If your man's ex from 20 years ago is still running around talking about your man that you are with now is not is still the love of her life. I don't know. Are you okay with that? The main thing that what killed the relationship was that we just went way too public, way too fast. Um, the love that I had for him and still to this day um, will always like he was the love of my life. I will admit that without any reservations. Um, he will always have a very special place in my heart. Um, but the re I don't know, ladies, how many of you are okay with her still carrying a candle, by the way? Is that, is that, oh, that's normal, that's all right, you ain't got a problem with that, that's not something you need to respond to, you're okay with that? Let's be clear, you don't talk like that unless, I mean, let, let's just be honest, I mean, that was a, hey, that was a hey boo, that was like a public hey boo. Just in case things don't work out with whoever you wit, I'm still over here. That is the lesson of the old women. Ladies, you have a very short shelf life. You have a very fast approaching expiration date. You don't get the op you don't have the luxury of playing the field more than a very short amount of time. You'll just be sitting over there talking about, hey, I'm still here. Yes, and that's where you will be. You don't have any leverage. The truth of the matter is that Vivica should have cashed out when she was with 50 back then. She was already in her 30s. She should have cashed out then. That was the last train leaving. Now she's sitting up here trying to fly all these kites and trying to send him all these messages and let him know that she's still available. Baby, he knows you're still available. He knows you're still available. He understands that. He understands that. He gets that. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is he's not available now. He's not available. Ladies, if you tell, you can listen to all these magazines. You can listen to Jamel Hill and Jamila Lemieux sit up here and tell you all that men should respect you sitting up here going through a whole phase for 30 years and that when you get ready, that the men should all be perfect gentlemen sitting on the wall waiting for you to get done getting run through and laid on and worn out and that when you finally lost all of your allure and lost all of your leverage then the men are supposed to exercise chivalry and just take you off the market as a damn charity case well yes that can happen but it won't be by any men that you want to be with There's the problem. There are men waiting to do that, but it won't be any of the men that you actually want to be with. That's the problem. You, you're going to want those guys, but they're not going to want you at that point. You have a very brief window, a very finite window where you could actually do that. Now, there was another video that she did not with Vlad. There was another part of the interview, and I thought this was very interesting. Well, you said at one point he was going to propose and he yes. had a 14-carat ring? 12. 12. Yes. Still a crazy ring. Yeah, what is that? but he's 50 cent. $2 million ring or something like that? 
Something like that? I don't know. But he got mad at me and turned it into a pair of earrings. <laughs> yeah, I found that out later. Yeah, found that out later. I was like, damn, B. You could have had the ring. Damn. You could have had I at the least could have turned it into a pair of earrings if we broke up, but it's all good. <laughs> and that right there was the problem. To anybody who wants to listen to this bullcrap story that she's handing out today about what happened to them and what it was really all about and what really went wrong or this, that, and the other. By the way, what did they tell you? Well, you said at one point he was going to propose and he yes. had a 14-carat ring. 12. 12. Yes. Still a crazy ring. Yeah, what is that? but he's 50 cent. $2 million ring or something like that? Something like that? I don't know. But he got mad at me and turned it into a pair of earrings. <laughs> Yeah, I found that out later. Yeah, found that out later. I was like, damn, B. You could have had the ring. Damn. You could have had the ring. I at least could have turned it into a pair of earrings if we broke up, but it's all good, you know? Okay, and I guess he went on his European tour. Yes. Uh, and at that point, I guess the relationship started to kind of devolve. I no, guess would, the no? relationship broke up after the World Music Awards. I came oh. back and he was on the radio saying he dumped me. So there you have it. Now, I want you all, you, you're free to speculate. But why do you think it is? Why do you think it is? He was going to propose and then didn't. What is it that she did? Perhaps it was because he got tired of hearing about how she's Vivica Fox and he's just some rapper who went diamond. Maybe it was that. Maybe it was, but ladies, can we just be honest? There is an arrogance that comes with youth. And I guess that's understandable, but too many of you have not been coached by your parents. You were raised by mothers who were never wives. Your mother was never a wife. And because she was never a wife, she didn't give you any idea whatsoever about moving into a wife position. Not a word or anything. So you just spend your time sitting up here, jumping from one bed to another, but nothing else. Nothing else. And therein lies the problem. Vivica didn't understand when it was too late. Now, there are going to be some bitter individuals who are going to ask some silly questions. And I bring up Vivica as a case study. If Vivica couldn't defeat the wall, what the hell makes the rest of you think you can? If Vivica waited too long to cash out, what makes the rest of you think that you got more time than she had? What makes you an older woman? Ladies, you start getting older in your late 20s. And by late 20s, I mean 26. There are a number. I know a couple of young females that I met them when they were 22. They are now 28. And they look 28. I remember what they looked like when I met them. And I, I see what they look like now. And I'm like, eh. Well, that, that escalated quickly. And already the way I look at them is different. The way I, the way I see them is different. I'm like, ah, you growing on up. Yeah, you're growing up and you're getting older. And so you look like a different person now. And that's reality. Now they're still playing the field, by the way, they're still playing the field and thinking they got unlimited amounts of time and that's okay. Go ahead. It didn't work for Vivica. Maybe it'll work for you. All right. But ladies, there, it, it, you're going to start getting forced out by the young, by the time you hit your late twenties, your, your younger competition is already going to be nipping at your heels. Most of you are telling yourselves that I won't be old until I, until I'm unable to conceive i'm unable to get pregnant ladies 
that's the metric you're using. And what I'm telling you is that no, when you lose the ability to have children, you're not just old, you're dead. Let's just be honest. I mean, at that point, the game is over. Whoever you have your arm around, when you are no longer able to have children, that's it. That's who you're going to be with right there. You are not going to be able to level up, scale up, upgrade. You can tell yourself that if you want to. But first of all, you're not really at the top of anybody's list of priorities once you get past 28. And I'm being generous. One year doesn't make a difference, fool. Let's not have stupidity talk. There's not a big difference. There's not a difference between 25 and 26. It's not a chronological cutoff. So speak for yourself and put the pipe down. The yellow, the short bus will be here to pick you up in the morning. By the time you can't have children anymore, it's over. The game is over. And I mean the game of life is over. You don't have a choice. So ladies, if nobody told you this and your mama didn't tell you this, whoever you are standing by when you go into menopause, that's the man you gonna be with. That's him. That is the best you're going to do. There is no upgrade. There is no elevation. There is no promotion. Whoever the man is that you are with when you go into menopause, this is it. Whether you wish it to be or not. Whether you wish it to be or not. That's the one you're going to be with. By the time you hit your mid-twenties, late-twenties, the game of competition is over. By the time you hit menopause, the game of life is over. Oh, you don't have to like that. All I can say is take a look at your experiences. Take a look at your experiences. It's not me talking and it's not me saying it. You know what makes a woman dumb? Getting old is inevitable. Being stupid is not. Getting old is unavoidable. Being dumb is not. And when you become arrogant and narcissistic, it makes you dumb. You see, when a woman is smart... Then when she's in her 20s, she figures out who the dude is she wants to be with. She doesn't let it get to late 30s and 40s. She doesn't let it get that far along. She cashes out when she's still at the top of her game. She cashes out. And that's the smart way to do it. That's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. And take a look at, uh, that's why I put up here, Beyonce and Alicia Keys, both of them are getting older. Let me go ahead here. I know I'm at, I am at great risk of offending their fan base, but let me go ahead and zoom this out a little bit so you can see what's going on there. But I told y'all years ago, Beyonce is putting on weight. It doesn't matter if she had children. The bottom line is she putting on weight. She got stretch marks. She got the mom bod going on. We doing the whole damn thing over here. She's doing the whole damn thing. Okay, but it's okay because she's cashed out. She has exited the casino and took home her winnings. She has exited the casino. That's the difference between her and... And uh, all you 30-something-year-old chicks on Facebook. Hidden dudes up in their DMs. That's the difference between Beyonce and you. 
Beyonce exited the casino. Alicia Keys exited the casino. She didn't wait talking about, well, let me wait till menopause and let me see if I can figure it out. No, she exited the casino. She got the hell up and left. She took her winnings and went home. She didn't keep trying to see if she could bid up the price. She didn't do something stupid like re-enter the sexual marketplace and see if she could bid up her price after three kids and, and 10 years of, oh, what was it was about 10 years of marriage. She didn't do something ultra dumb. She grabbed a winner. She's held on to the winner and that's it. She is not going to give herself the opportunity to have to compete against a new 20-year-old version of herself. She's not going to open up that Pandora's box. Most of the females, listen to me right now, I just got to keep it honest with you ladies, most of you have aged out and most of you are face-to-face -face in a Mexican standoff against a bunch of young women. If you are listening to me tonight over the age of 26, if you got a fellow who's halfway worth a damn, you better grab him now. It is time to exit the casino. It is time to leave. Do not attempt to bid up. It's time to go. And if you are not with the fella you want to be with, it is time for you to get him now. Hot Girl Summer has been canceled. We better start Smart Girl Summer. Hot Girl Summer has been officially canceled. It's over. We're done. Because you all don't know when to identify when it is time to leave the arena. It is time to exit. You all don't know when it's time to go home. And in the process, you are still staying out there on the field with females. In this case, young enough to be your daughter. Vivica is out here complaining and talking about somebody who is young enough to be her daughter. How the hell are you going to compete against that? Well, there is one way you can compete against that, but the time to be doing that was 20 years ago. That's the problem. When Vivica was in her 30s and 50 Cent was still available, that was the time to cash out. And you know how? Well, J the next thing that dummies will say, because you don't know any better, well, everybody get older, Jason. Everybody get older. Yeah, but if you get with a man and you stick with him, then he becomes emotionally invested in you. So that when, yes, you don't have the youth anymore, but you've got the usefulness. That's what we mean when we say ride or die. That means you put in your time. That means that you are something we have invested in. Now, that doesn't get old. That doesn't lose its value. Just being young and sexy, well, that certainly helps. But you know what really helps? When we show up at 2 in the morning and we knock on the door and we tell you, hey, get out here and grab this nigga's ankles in the trunk of my car so we can get him out. Come out here in the trunk of my car and grab this fella's ankles. Help me get him out. The, help me get this body out this trunk. I don't care how young and sexy she is. When you give her the 2 a.m. help me get the body out the trunk phone call, she got to be ready. And if you were the female that you've been with for a long time, you know she's solid. That is the only protection against age that a woman has that is the only one there is no other nothing nothing not your degree 
not your career, not your public accolades, not your awards. You don't have anything else that will protect you from losing your value of getting older, um, except if you've been with him long enough for him to invest in you. And unfortunately, if you play the field too damn long, guess what? You never give him the time to invest. And then next thing you know, you're sitting up on DJ Vlad all bubble-lipped, sitting up here talking about, well, he was going to propose to me, and then I messed that up. So I found out we broke up when he went on the European tour and called the radio program and said, yeah, I ain't with her no more. That's how she found out. Ladies, you can't compete against the young chicks. It's not happening. And now they are forcing you out. That is just the way it is going to be. And you shouldn't be trying to. It is time to exit the casino. You don't have anything to protect you against that. It's time to exit the casino. Pick up your winnings and leave. But enough from me now. The telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that laid the foundation upon which all of these other imitators and copycats have stolen and taken everything that they got from it. This is the place. You'll be hearing them all talk about it next week. You'll be hearing the talking points articulated. You'll be hearing them mess it up. At least you'll be hearing it correctly here tonight. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to tonight's program. Thank you very much for doing so. I appreciate your support for this. I know you could have done a lot of other things like tricking off at the club, but we appreciate that. My man, stay positive. Thank you very much for your support here tonight. I appreciate that as well. And everyone who has contributed on Cash App, PayPal, or Super Chat, thank you very much for your support here. We're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines. Everyone who has been instructed to call in, you are going to need to get on the phone. The telephone number is 646-787-1933. If you do not call in, you will be banned. Also, Cody. Cody had a lot to say before the program started tonight. Fortunately for Cody, I'm right here. So you will have the opportunity to go ahead and call in as well. This will be your opportunity to go ahead and speak. That'll be the thing we want to see you doing here. So by de definitely you can go ahead and give us a call up or we can ban you, whichever you prefer. That can happen too. We're talking about when the young women force out the old. A whole bunch of old women. Facebook today is a repository of old women who did not cash out back when they were winning. Facebook is a wasteland of females who didn't cash out when they had every when it was time to leave the casino they did not cash out that's what facebook is now facebook is a place where they should have cashed out a while ago and they didn't and instagram is quickly becoming another place ladies social media is not gonna save you from from your mistakes Social media is not going to save you from that. Social media is not going to prevent that. Opening up the world to hundreds and thousands of men, that's not the problem. The problem isn't that you don't have enough access to enough men. The problem is that you are not fit for the ones you want to be with. And if you are a female who has worked on worked on her arrogance and has been conceited, then there's going to be a penalty for that. And too many of you ladies today don't understand that once you cross 25, 26, you are old now. 
There, there's no more upside to it. Now, men don't tell you this. And then when you do realize the reality is setting in, what you all do is try to change the deck chairs on the Titanic. And then you say, well, it doesn't matter what the men think. I'll just go get me somebody else who is willing to accept it. Well, and then what you realize is, well, all you're really getting is somebody else who's willing to lay up. You're not getting somebody who's willing to upgrade you. When a man's walking in the damn room with a 12 carat ring and dropping a bunch of flowers at your desk, um, at your house, and is telling you to move into his 10,000 square foot home, ladies, that's it. It's time to pack up and leave. Instead, what the females say, and let's just be very, very clear, this is an avenue and an aspect of female nature here today. What females tell themselves was, I'll be damned if this guy is offering me a 12 carat ring. Why, certainly there's somebody who would offer me 24 bigger. If this guy is willing to buy me an Aston Martin. Well, certainly there's somebody willing to buy me a Lamborghini. I just need to hold out for a better offer. Certainly that's what the situation will be. I'll just stick around. Then you stick around so long, there's nothing else to stick around for. How many of you ladies right now are waking up older and realize now be damned that was the dude. That was the guy. I should have cashed out then. There wasn't a second bus coming. There's not a second bus coming. Let me get caller from area code 203, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Jason. This is imagery. This is imagery from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Imagery from Bridgeport. What's on your mind? Yeah, I was in the chat and I had one of the fellas, one of the persons said that I had a lot to say to protect Vivica honor. Let me be very clear. Vivica is a fine, let's say a list, B list actress, right? And we know about 50 and you know, I, like Vivica, she makes a lot of these chicks, younger chicks, look funny. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. She makes a lot look strange. So my experience is that when a woman hits the wall, because I'm not a high-value man, you know what I mean? Um, modest means working class, to be honest with you. So I'm not even going to put myself in the position. Like some of these women, they post themselves up like they going hard in the paint, like they seven feet tall. You know what I mean? And like you said, when they hit the wall and I came to the realization at my age that, you know, my value in the dating pool isn't like it was when I was 25. So I get with what she's saying from a male, uh, from a male perspective. It's just that Vivica is fine, but her, how can I say it? Like, it looks like she's thirsty. Like there's something about that. It don't make sense. Vivica, I'm going to say this and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll try to close it with this. Vivica probably could get any man she wants in America. Yeah, I don't know if people will agree with me or not. Okay, listen, she could get any she could get twice. any man she wants for what exactly? Okay, for what? Just she's fine and she's an actress. I'm gonna say this. Now uh, uh, she's above average, let's say. But if the average guy Let's say, how can I say? This? Okay, brother, let me I try this. Let me try word. this again. In the interest of brevity, she could get mm -hmm. any man in America that she wants. You say that, but then the question is, she could get any man in America she wants for it's, what? To do what? Well, 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 one, she she's an actress, so she's a professional. Now, obviously, she can't get fifty, so he's out in the market. But he's out of. You know, uh, he's above average, but you got a, uh, you know, even a high value man, I would think, wouldn't they think twice not dating Vivica. I'm just saying. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa no, 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 okay, okay, let's wife, back up. Okay, up. let's back up. up. Okay, we're saying. not, we're not going to talk over the host, sir. You're saying silly oh, things. I'm sorry, I You're saying silly things, and people need to see why it's silly. You use the word dating. 
that is not what you meant. And that's the problem. Okay. That is the deceptive talk that males give females that keeps giving them all this false hope. And all guys like you have done is create a wasteland of females, which works out for you because you don't care how raggedy they are because you're, you're not able to bid up your price, but you're lying to them. You do not mean dating. You mean, boy, I lay up with Vivica. Well, yeah, there's never been a shortage of men willing to lay up with Vivica or Lizzo, or Sidibe. The question is, mm. is there a man willing to, is there a one percenter willing to commit his resources and protection and authority to Vivica? Can she still get that from any man in America? I think, I'm going to honestly say, maybe those were the, that was the wrong verbiage as far as wife material. Let's keep it there. Okay, I'm okay, gonna say wife, that. okay, she's she, wife say, she's wife material to whom? Who is she wife material so, to? Well, how can I say this? Being that she is Vivica Fox and she's an A list uh actress, A list, B list, right? And you said the one percent. Okay, that one percent feel, let's say entertainers, athletes, right? Okay. Now if we go to the other the how can I say in America, let's say uh, middle class, upper middle class would be wouldn't have. I would say, um, if I was in her age range in the demographics, which I probably am, I don't want to date myself, but I'm 49, 56 or whatever. But I mean, there's a possibility that you know she is wife material to let's say that a black man in America, let's say working in corporate America, for example. No, she's, no, no, she's actually okay. not. Okay. She is wife material to somebody who is a fan or a fanboy. She is not wife material mm. to a man who is doing better than her. And that's what she also said in that interview. She wanted a man who was doing better than her, which may be a relative thing right now, by the way. But the bottom line is no, she's not eligible for a man who's doing better than her because there are too many females half her age who are that he can make a real investment in that's the problem mm. how much return mm. on investment is a man gonna get out of a 56 year old now if you're just really a fan and you're just a real no. fan of vivica fox well, yeah, that makes perfect sense if you're just a real fan. But if we're talking about men who are going to invest in her and gonna give her a mm -hmm. one, give her something that she can't give herself, who's gonna do that at 56? For a and you're talking, you're trying to guess what you, you're talking about what you would do. Yeah, guys like you, if we gave you a million dollars, you should trick it off and throw the. Let me go get Vivica Fox because you've never had access to that before, so you'll take her at 26 or 96. But for a man who's actually got the resources and ability, he's gonna be able. He has the freedom to be far more discriminating, so he doesn't have to just take whatever he can get. He can say, "Hey, Vivica, you waited too long. There are better options." And I'm not a groupie or a fanboy. Okay. Well, two things. First, I'm not a groupie or a fanboy. That's one thing. I admire her work, right? You are and talking a like a groupie. Today? Huh? You're talking. Hello? You are talking like a groupie. Well, I don't want to sound like that because, I, I mean, I've had access to high-value women, let's say, in the entertainment business. Oh, I'm not no, going to yeah, get no, into no, that no, right yeah. now. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Just stop it. Just go on, make whatever your point. Okay, okay, I, okay. Don't, don't, don't exaggerate. Okay, just okay, make, your, right. make your point, but don't exaggerate. Just, right. just keep pushing. The point, okay, I'm not exaggerating because indirectly, I know people that know Vivica but, or, or may have been, you know, in that realm. I'm not going to go there. All I'm saying is that a million dollars, if I, were, if I was doing better than Vivica, Honestly speaking, let's say, for instance, I was an A-list, uh, uh, well, I want to say rapper or actor, and I'm doing better than Vivica, and I have more to offer her. I mean, I would consider her as being wifey material. Why not? She's a classy woman. She's professional. She has a career. I mean, like, I wouldn't overlook her. Like, you know what I mean? She's some strag out here. I, you know what I mean? I ain't going to play. I won't play her like that. But being that it's 50 cent, she, and you know, she's saying she hit the wall and these young women are giving her competition. 
I'm, and I'm gonna say this: very, not a quote. the very he fact some, he's using he the made, phrase "wifey," the very fact he's saying "wifey" tells you the amount of resources and excellence she can expect. Well, maybe that well, wife. Okay, I want to put it in that vernacular: wife material, because she makes a good amount. Of some of these young girls look busted out here. I'm gonna be honest with you; she don't look bad. Vivica is fine, man. Dude, but I'm she, saying she looks like, uh, fi- she looks fifty six. What the hell are you talking? And she looks like she's well, okay. she looks like she's had a ton of plastic surgery. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, okay, well that's cool too. I mean, but most women do get work. Look at all these chicks. No, most women the, um, don't get work. And all of that. No, most women don't. Huh? Most women don't get work. Dudes like you who live on the internet, you're well, flooded with the girls nah, on Instagram. I don't live on the internet. Most female, yeah, okay, sir, respect. most females don't get work. That's just flat out wrong. You're just talking Well, I don't you. want to say most. No, you just said most. I want to say most. most. Let me clarify that. A lot of these women out here, they it's go not a lot. these other countries, it's not get a lot. these butt shots. It's I not mean, a it's, lot. It's terrible. No, it is not. It's just the ones huh? that it's the ones that you touch yourself when you're watching on Instagram. It is not most females. Nah. It's not even a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, thank nah, you very nah, much for your call that, here, but... but Fellas, y'all got to understand here, when you blow these women's heads up with that kind of stuff there, they take it seriously. They don't understand that you're just desperate and you'll take whatever you can get. They'll take it to heart, especially if they need it to be their reality. They need to believe that this is true. They need to believe that this is accurate and right. So when you say those things, they're, they're seriously believing you. They're seriously believing, well, hell, it it must be true. Why would he say it if it wasn't? I'm sure at some point he's going to respond. I'm sure at some point all these guys can't be lying to me, right? I mean, they can't all be sitting here lying to me, can they? Some of them must be telling the truth. Right? And that's really what they believe. Caller from Mary Code 413, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. This is Jane from Springfield, Massachusetts. How you doing? Hello, Jane from Springfield. Um, One of my mods was really messing up here tonight, and I'm going to have to take her to the woodshed. But she did ask you to give us a call up here, so why don't you go ahead and clarify your comments? Yes, it's okay, and we haven't talked in a long time, and I really miss talking to you, so um, I did want to chime in and say that um, Vivica, she is acting up because, yes, she is an older woman, and she has aged out, and I really agree with everything that you're saying. Um, I just think that Nia, Jada, Vivica, they were the it girls. They always were casting. They was in the 90s movies, and that's when we knew all the lines to a movie, and we really paid attention to it. Um, I don't think that 50 upgraded. I will say that I I do disagree on her um, 50 being an upgrade. I don't think that's an upgrade. I think that he found a girl, and he just stopped, and she took what she was supposed to get at okay. that time. Okay, explain, wait a minute, um, wait, 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 wait. Explain to me exactly what do you mean by mm-hmm. you don't, why, why do you, you say I don't think 50 upgraded. What exactly does that mean? I don't. The reason why I say that is because I'm in the 413, I'm in the Northeast area, which um, 203A60, we all know 50 when he was in his prime. When he was in his prime, he was coming up here, he was giving shows, and he had the girls, and he was opening up his home in Greenwich, Connecticut, and we was all out there partying with him. And it was like he started in the club, then he went to his house, and everybody went there, and we always had fun. And um, not saying that was the right thing to do. At the same time, we seen the It Girls, and we seen that Vivica was there at the time when he was with her. So it's just like... You know, Vivica holding on to those times, she's playing herself. 
Okay. 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 Well, Jane, all right. I've asked the question now, and we're kind of just rambling on, and mm-hmm. you're not really ask, answering what I'm asking. You said that you don't think Sorry, that 50 Jason. Cent, I'm taking a look at the female he's with now, and you're saying, I don't feel like mm-hmm. he upgraded. You are not explaining what it mm-hmm. is about where who he's with now that is not an upgrade. So can we discuss who he's with now and why that is now not an upgrade? Because she's not, I feel like she's not a black woman. She's not us. She's not who we represent and what we always talk about on our day-to-day broadcast. Um, I feel like like even with his son that he doesn't represent before this, it's just like he's dogging him out and then he has this new woman that he may say is an upgrade and yes, she may have a business, but I feel like she is not represented. Okay, you have, okay, uh, it sounds like you're a little jealous. I'm just going to be totally honest because this is jealous female talk. <laughs> but I, no. asked, I asked you specifically about what about her is not an upgrade. And the first words out of your mouth is, well, she's not black. First of all, she very obviously is melanated. So if you're going to try to play the one drop rule game or something like that, then you're going to try to be the person who defines who is or isn't black. Let me just hand you your dunce cap now. Let's just make this real short. Let me hand you your dunce. And let me I hand totally you your let me let me hand you your dunce cap now so that people don't get confused. <laughs> okay. Cuz I feel like if you're going to be an idiot, you need to wear a dunce cap so people can see, "Oh, well when she talks, just understand it's the dunce speaking." So are you going to sit here and try to tell right. us that you are the arbiter over who is black enough or not? Are you really going to sit here and try that? No. Are you really going to sit here and no, try I that? No, <laughs> no, Jason, but when 50 first came out, 50 had so many good lines and so many good bars that he represented us, and we all wrote for him. And then when it comes to the time where he's disrespecting his first child, which he may have okay, a problem with his Okay, ma- ma'am, that- you are, I-, I can see, the real reason for you to call in is because you're babbling and irrational. You're really not making any sense. No, uh, uh, and, and I think I think before I told you to lay off the mollies before when you called in. This is really just no. This I is never okay. Took well, you <laughs> clearly you sound like if you're not on drugs, you need to start so you'll have an excuse for some of the idiocy you're saying. I've asked you several times. You're saying the same dumb things over and over again. I asked you what about this is not an upgrade, and all you have is a bunch of hater talk about. All these lies and fiction you make them. You used to be at parties with 50 Cent. If you don't get off my phone lying. All these people on my phone lying tonight about celebrities they think they knew and claiming they knew. I just It's ridiculous. But second of all, you haven't laid a single glove on her about why she is not an upgrade. I asked you and you go back to him. Well, he had so many lines and bars. Ladies and gentlemen, if your mama smokes crack while in just, during gestation, the babies come out talking like this. So... Ladies, stop with the drugs. But stop Jason, with the liquor. The it's brains don't that. develop it's completely, and that's and it. I'm not saying that I'm on the side, and I'm not trying okay. to talk you. Okay, you're I'm babbling. Not you you are babbling and, and rambling irrationally. I have asked you several times one question, and you've gone off on tangents completely unrelated to the question. I asked you. You said that he hasn't upgraded, and then you wanted to talk about his rhymes and parties they used to be at. You haven't said a word about her and why she is not an upgrade compared to Vivica. Because what if I don't know her, Jason? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, you. then you shouldn't then you her. shouldn't I, speak I, I, on her. Like Jason. Then I, you shouldn't speak at all. Okay. That's called attention whoring. You just you just articulated why you shouldn't have said anything. If you don't know her, why the hell are you speaking on her? How old are how old are about how old are you? Oh, okay. So that's what we're gonna do. How okay. old? Right, how old are you? Jason. You're, I'm 34, Jason. You're 34. And, uh, like, I'm not there, trying, Jason, there I'm it not is. Argue with you because there it listen, is. Listen, that's not what I called. There it I is. I called to talk to you about you are yes, 30. I, I you're 34. To talk to you about Vivica yes, because Vivica there it is. is parading herself around. 
Ma'am, you said that enough. You, she's still dwelling on You have next, said enough. On, and that I agree with you on that. Okay, you've said enough. I agree with you, Jason. You, I'm not trying okay, to fight with you. Okay, you're not going to you filibuster that, Jason, on my program. You. You're not going to filibuster on my program. People are here to hear me, not to hear you squawk on. So you're going to back off with that. That's fine. You've already articulated what your problem is. Other than a drug addiction or drug affliction, you're old. I have none of those. Well, I you, have none you, of those. Actually, none actually, of those you, you sound just like one. But in any case, uh, in addition to that, you're old. So you are uh, you are provoked and agitated and aggravated because, by the way, I'm yeah, not. you fit I'm the not. profile. I, I literally, I agree with you on everything that you're saying. And when you said that you apologize, and I do accept your apology for when you said your mod blocked me. I don't want to fight with you. That's um, not what I called you for. I, I didn't, wait a minute, I didn't apologize to you. What are you talking about? Okay. I didn't apologize to you. You have some serious emotional issues. I suggest I you, don't, Jason. I suggest, I, Jason, I suggest I you get you back to the I methadone clinic. Get Ma'am, get back to the methadone clinic and get off my phone. I'm not on any of those. Okay. Have a good night, Jason. And do not post in the chat anymore. Okay. You can just sorry. You can just sit and listen, but sorry, you, all you're doing is making confusion. This is not what we need. I see why my mods wanted you to call in. I'm like, okay, she's in there babbling. No, don't make her call in. Just block the heifer. We don't need all that. This is your brain on drugs. Caller from area code 609. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is L calling out of Mount Airy section of Philadelphia. L out of Philadelphia. What's on your mind? How you doing? The title of this video is called Young Woman Forcing Out the Old. That's very true because let me tell you something. I was going to say every five years, but every year it's a new group of young girls that come through a wave that get the old chicks out the way. There's going to always be a new group of young women that's going to come and get you out the way. So I really feel as though men have the upper hand because young women like older men. It's okay. kind of like... No, no. Win -win okay, let's situation. let's let's clarify something there, because here's where guys get it screwed up. Men do not have the upper hand. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm gonna say this and be quiet. I'm not taught. You're the guy guessing the way through this. I'm not. Men do not have the upper hand. <laughs> Men with resources and accomplishments have the upper hand. Okay, right, right. You stand corrected, or should I say you sit corrected? No, sir, you're guessing your way yeah, through. I sit you're, corrected because I'm you're, guess, down. you're guessing your no, way I'm through this. I'm not guessing my way through it. I was going to No, you're Jason, I was going to say the same thing you're you babbling say. You're your right. way through this. If you this. have your shit together, you have the upper hand. Okay. So as, as you stand corrected, you can't just be a male. Male, you don't count. Okay. If you're not a male who has accomplishments and resources together, you don't count. So let me ask you this. If for what you said, if you do have your resources together, do you feel as though that we have the upper hand? That speaks for itself. Don't believe me if we have the upper hand. Ask the women and go by what they do, not by what they say. I don't have to make that argument. Take a look at what the women do. Now, it just so happens mm -hmm. that usually we hit our financial peak after a certain age. Now, there are anomalies to that. There are exceptions of males who are in their 20s, some even in their teens, who make six figures or more. Well, yeah, that can happen too. And the females tend to gravitate towards them. So the age is not really the defining characteristic. It just so happens that most men 
don't get their finances together until after a certain age because unless you inherited the money or were very lucky, you have to work to get to a certain point where you've gained enough value. And it usually takes you about a decade to gain enough value to start becoming a peak value earner. So it just yeah. coincides with being quote older. But then again, it's really by the time you get to your mid thirties. So that's really the metric with the valuation of the dollar where it is today in the economic system. That's what happens. But it's not simply because you're older. Because I was in my early 20s making over $200,000 a year. I was in my early 20s with that happening. But that's an exception. That's an anomaly. That's not common. Now, the other thing okay. that age and gives you is wisdom, hopefully. Now, the reason why that's an advantage for men is that money is power and power only makes you more of what you already are. Now, if you get a bunch of money in your early 20s, it's very likely that you're going to blow it all because you don't really know what to do with all that power. You're still not mature enough and all this power is going to make you very immature is what's going to happen. Now, once you've been through some experiences and seen some things, you see how duplicitous and dishonest and deceitful and manipulative the world can be. You start becoming better at discerning people's attitudes, discerning people's behavior, being able to dissect them, being able to examine what you really want out of life and who you really are, what you're really willing to accept and what you're absolutely not willing to accept. That takes time to figure that out too. And the older you get, the more emotionally and intellectually stable you become. Now, when you empower a person who is emotionally mature, intellectually mature, and socially mature, as opposed to what you did in their early 20s, and I was one of them, I was... I made a bunch of money, but I was young, I was brash, I was immature, I was unseasoned, I wasn't ready... So I was, power just made me more of all those things. Now, if you empower mm. an emotionally immature, intellectually, mm. well, I was, I was intellectually mature. Let me not, not lie about that. But emotionally immature, socially right, right. immature individual, well, you've given him the ability to blow himself up. But if you empower an emotionally mature, intellectually mature, socially mature individual, You've, 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 uh, I don't want to say you turned him into a god, but you d definitely turned him into something super. Now, that's the advantage there. Now, if getting older mm. gives you the edge, I suppose it would in the, that regard, because now as a man, you're supposed to have a handle on the world, not just financially, but you're supposed to know people. You're not supposed to be getting played for a fool by everybody who comes along or anybody who comes along, to be totally honest. You're supposed to know the game. And you're supposed to know the ropes. So a bunch of mistakes that you were making in your 20s, you're not supposed to still be making those. Now that, now that is an aspect of getting older mm. that in and of itself, by itself, can give you the edge. Now that one. Right. But by the same now, token, mm. I don't really think I would take very much advice from a fella who was intellectually mature emotionally mature socially mature and financially broke because if all of those maturities mm. if all those maturities left him didn't result in him being financially empowered i don't know if i'd want to listen to him so without that financial component don't i don't i still don't know if i want to hear him and while we on the subject as far as with her being so i didn't heard you break down cities and you know people's city damn near more than they know she's if you know where i'm at she's from over south jersey she's not really nothing to brag about because i know a few niggas that then took her down so far as with this picture and her being up there like she's this type of diva she's really not that she's not nothing hard to get with so 50 having her on his arm i don't really think that that's that's some type of trophy okay i'm not i'm not sure who you're referring to the woman that's on the screen right now. There's the two, one who, there are um, two women with the on the comparisons screen. comparisons with her versus Vivica. Okay. The one in the red. Okay. What's her name? I don't know her name. I don't pay attention to her. Like, I know she's from South Jersey. 
I don't follow her. Okay. I just know her face. She got an attractive face. You know he's from. You know she's from South Jersey, and you know some dudes who have taken her to bed. Yeah, but you don't even know her name. Yeah, you know or, any, but you don't know her name, and you don't know who she is. What the fuck do I need to know her name for? Do you know her name? I don't know her name. I don't know her birth on her birth certificate. I don't. I don't follow her like that. I know the face. Okay. Tonight is crack baby night. Clearly, never. Don't even. Clearly, tonight is crack baby. Why do I got all these folk out here lying about who they know? People, don't y'all know I'm only going to have to ask one question before I expose you for the liar that you are? Why are so many of you sitting up here lying tonight? Are y'all really just this desperate to be relevant in your own heads? You're fantasizing? I know who she is. I know some dudes who got that. I know some dudes who got that. Oh, good. What's her name? I don't know. She got a nice face, though. The hallucinations are real. The hallucinations are real. Didn't he know one? All I had to ask was one. I guess they're so used to calling these high value posers who don't know how to ask one good question. I can debunk you with just one good question. By the way, what's her name? I don't know. Yeah, I know you don't know her name. The chi the chick in the red. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Call of Mary Code 252, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Caller from 252 is getting their hair done. Caller from area code 860, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Big Jason? It's me, Ro, from the 860. Ro, what's uh, on your mind? One thing I noticed that you... Hey, man, how's it going, man? What's on your mind? From Connecticut. Um, what was on my mind was... um, is, It seemed like Vivica was trying to... Like, remember that whole Sierra situation? She was trying to look... That whole fanboy thing, I wanted to touch more upon that. And that's how I kind of got the vibe of what she thought that 50 cents was until she found out that he was a man. And she got more than which I feel like she couldn't handle. Well, um, so that in, in, in effect, you are correct. But I mean, I think she really exposed it. What she really thought. She really thought I'm Vivica Fox. I mean, she told Vlad, you have to remember women, especially women who are celebrities or women who he had. And, and they don't even have to be celebrities. Females who are used to getting a lot of male attention early. They become what they call what I call debutante syndrome. They catch debutante syndrome. Mm. They never let go of the idea. If once a female has been the hot girl in the room or dudes show her a disproportionate amount of positive attention compared to other females, she never lets that go. That becomes her identity. She adopts that and embraces it. It becomes etched into her as her identity. So that even when reality has obviously changed and is no longer the case, she still holds on to that. When Vivica told Vlad, well, why do we break up? Well, because I was Vivica Fox. As if that's all you need to say. Well, I was Vivica Fox. And that that has the same value as an album going diamond. She's literally telling you all I had to be was Vivica Fox and that was it. And that was the value oh. that I brought to it. And of course he should be grateful. Of course he should respond positively. So she really did believe that was all she needed to do. She's telling us decades later, all I needed to do was be Vivica Fox. That's it. The craziest thing. The other, the other thing I wanted to touch upon is I'm going to always touch upon the intellectual property and stuff of that nature. Again, it shows that, again, I, certain black women, not all, but some black women don't value or don't understand um, like intellectual property, the value behind it. And if they're creating something, I see that they don't really respect men that are in those type of spaces or even trying to come up in those type of spaces and mindset the way that they ought to. And I, and I find that very kind of problematic because it kind of, in the long run, 
it kind of – them two could have been a good couple. Them two could have been a very powerful, successful couple before Jay-Z and Beyonce and other ones. Pre- but it kind of set the tone. You get what I mean? Or what I'm trying to get at? Well, yeah, I mean, but how do you convince somebody who tells themselves that they are God's gift? And remember, at that time, dudes was already falling all over Vivica. She was already she was already <laughs> believing the hype. She had completely and thoroughly bought into the hype that she was the hottest black woman in Hollywood, that it was really just her and Hallie, and that was it. And maybe that was true. Problem. You are hot for everybody who's a fan, but there are only a few men who are actually going to pay for you and support you. And you had, that one was the last one leaving. Everybody after him is like, oh, you're not Vivica Fox. You're 36. (laughs) She wasn't ready. He was the last person who really was willing to break bread or do something like that. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Um, Yeah, I mean, that was a tough thing to swallow here. But understand, fellas, I want you to know something here. The reason why you can't get excited about all this stuff here is because it ain't going to change. Ladies, if the clock runs out, you can believe all the stuff you want to. You can buy into debutante syndrome. You can accept all the fallacies you'd like to here. But the bottom line is that when the clock runs out, the clock runs out. J-Lo was another one 20 years ago. She's in her 50s now. It's a bunch of them chicks who were in their 30s and they didn't cash out. They didn't make the right choices. They are still on the market. When the young chicks force the old chicks into the discount bin at the dollar store. Ladies, understand what the men know. We know y'all ain't going nowhere. P. Diddy knows there ain't going to be another P. Diddy. He knows that. He knows that her last real chance was Mark Anthony. Not not uh, A-Rod. Her last chance was Mark Anthony. That was the only fella of any real status who... That was her last chance to get taken off the market. That's it. We're done. You can re-enter the arena, but all you're going to do is get your head knocked off. That's it. That's it. P. Diddy is, uh, he's another one just like Vivica, putting up throwback pictures for Jennifer Lopez. You know why? Because he knows if anybody was going to take her off the market by now, it would have happened. He ain't scared. He's not worried about looking dumb. Nobody's coming to get her. There might be a few dudes who remember what it was like to lay up with her a decade or two ago, but nobody needs to pay the premium and certainly doesn't need to make a huge commitment like marriage. So P. Diddy knows ain't nobody coming to fight him over her. The game is over. She's now eligible for nostalgia sex. That's it. The game is over. Call of Mary Code 301. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's up, brother? Black KJ out of Baltimore. KJ out of Baltimore. What's on your mind? I mean, maybe this can be a different discussion for a different day. But, you know, maybe if she ain't fuck her face up with all that damn surgery, you know, I just wish my sisters wouldn't do all that shit to their face. You know, if they just stay beautiful like a Janet Jackson who was able to get a dude that was doing better than her and get divorce him and get the bag. Well, no, or, okay, that, that's not, you know, no, 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 no. I can't even let us get past that. A woman doesn't get value from divorcing men. When a woman divorces men, understand, that's it. There are two rules in life that a woman needs to understand. Number one, the most important decision that you will make is the man you lay next to. Number two, whoever you get pregnant by, that is the best you will ever do in life. Whoever is the man who gets you pregnant, you're done. That is your peak right there. 
And the only thing you'll be doing for the rest of your days is hoping and praying that you can find some loophole or some idiot who's going to give you a higher valuation. And that's a hell of a lot of risk to be taken mm. on. That's a hell of a lot of gambling to be doing. But the truth of the matter is, those are the rules. And when a woman gets married, she increases her value by the man that she retains, not the man that she loses. And the reason for this is because, okay. quote, when you talk about, quote, getting the bag, brother, once again, this is one of those inversions. Getting the bag enhances a man's value. It does nothing for a woman. First of all, Janet Jackson already had money. So that that's an irrelevant point to make. She already right. had money. Right. So that doesn't mean anything. All she did, she wanted to keep the man. Why? Because... He's one of the few, he was one of the few eligible bachelors in the world who was doing, listen for the key words, better than her. He was a man that she felt she could look up to. He was her socioeconomic superior. And I, everybody should have known from day one, he's not going to keep you. That's what them Arabs do. If they do get a black female, it's going to be just for some brown sugar fun, and then they're going to send you off of the sunset. He don't think nothing to giving you a few, few million dollars and putting you on the first damn boat back to uh, the Carolinas. He doesn't care about that. That's not a loss yeah, to him. Yeah. These are guys, there are literally, if you go on YouTube, you can go take a look at it, that the Middle East is literally right now a desert for exotic cars. There are literally thousands of exotic cars in the Middle East gathering dust and sand. They think nothing of that, so th that's not a come up. Take a look at Mackenzie Bezos. She left Jeff and got with a damn substitute teacher. Take a look at Melinda Gates. She ain't gonna get another bill. It doesn't matter how much money she has. She can't go back to any of the places she's used to going. She can't go to the Ebbett Grill, the Capitol Grill, the Bulls and Bears. She can't go to Giuliani's. She can't go to any of those places anymore because before now she was Mrs. Gates. Now she's just Melinda, a divorcee with a bunch of money. But that's it. Yeah. When I understand as men I need y'all to understand this as men we are not one dimensional that's why I said to be an alpha you have to be intellectual social and financial because that is what gives us our value our value is not just being a dummy with money it's, that's why I said being a man with resources and accomplishments and when you are the woman standing next to the king that is what gives you your value. But if you're a female and you don't have the king anymore, and well, yeah, they did leave you with a few bags of gold, that doesn't increase your value. You're just a single chick with a bunch of money. But you're not valuable. Call of Mary Code 404, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. This is Stephanie. Um, I was instructed to call in by your mod. And why would my mods be instructing you to call in, Stephanie? <laughs> because I said, okay, Jason, um, we get it. Older women aren't shit. Okay, I don't think you said that just once. I'm sure you said that a few times. I think I might have said it twice. Uh-huh. And why would that be a problem? And what are you so upset about? Who hurt you? No, I'm not upset, and nobody hurt Clearly me. Clearly, um, you I are. I was just really, I, I was just really commenting. I'm not hurt and upset about anything because, actually, every time you do a show, I'm tuned in. I have learned so much from you, and I really love your broadcast. So. I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I'm just saying. I, w I was just really just, that's all I was saying. I get Stephanie, it. Stephanie. We're older women. Stephanie. We're done. How old are you, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm 41. How many kids you got, Stephanie? I have two daughters. How many husbands you got, Stephanie? I've been married once. How many husbands you got now, Stephanie? 
I don't have any husbands now. Where, where is your ex-husband, Stephanie? He's still around. Um, I, I initiated the divorce. He didn't want it, but I did. Okay. Um, why, I think that. And why and did you want? Why, why did you want so the divorce, Stephanie? You. Say that again. How long ago did you get divorced? Um, four years ago. Four years ago, so you were 37? Yes. And why did we want to get divorced? How long were you married? We were married for uh, eight years at the time that I got a divorce from him. Why in the world do we want to get divorced with eight years and two kids in the game? Why in the world are we trying to get divorced at 37? Well, my kids weren't his. Um, I had them coming into the marriage. So they weren't his. So and, he, so I mean, he agreed. Honestly, so I, this I, man I, agreed to be stepdaddy. You actually got you, and you probably with is women initiate eighty percent of the divorces, but they also uh, demand eighty percent of the marriages. They pressure men for marriage. So you pressured this man who to get married to you to take care of somebody else's kids, and then after eight years of him agreeing to take care of somebody else's kids. You decide to stab him in the back and file divorce. That's rather cold-blooded. Well, I don't necessarily know that I would say I stabbed him in the back. I think that we got married very prematurely, and I just didn't like what I married. I had already been through a lot prior to marrying him, which is why I initially said I agree with your show. Um, I had already been through a lot prior to marrying him. So I think that by the time I got married to him, you know, I was already raising my girls by myself. Um, and I was just basically in survival mode. And so I just, everything he said and did just got on my nerves. I just wasn't happy. So, um, well, you don't, you know, don't just, not, okay, I'm but you haven't, you right. haven't said a single thing that was about him. That was the problem. So I, I'd like I thank you for your candor. You were a you were a disciplinary problem. I just felt like I was the type of woman that because I was already so used to doing everything on my own right. when it came to me raising my kids and just right. being the head of my own household. That, that he you just were wasn't the that type you of man couldn't be coached. Me. That you couldn't be coached. He he didn't have any rules. It was nothing for him to coach me on. You chose him. I did because of And he wasn't okay, but he wasn't the first. Wait, 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 wait. You were twenty nine at that time. Mm -hmm. You were not a little girl. And you had already struck out you had already struck out and you were so grown minded that you became a mother before you became a wife. So you were not some naive young woman just skipping through the world oblivious. You were very much seasoned and worldly and knowledgeable. You had already been having you had already had multiple kids. Yeah, I was. I was seasoned and knowledgeable in what I already was seasoned and knowledgeable in. I wasn't seasoned and knowledgeable in being somebody's wife after coming from what I had come from. Now, please remember here, she said, uh, I had already been through a lot before I got with him. Okay. I did. I was. I, I openly admit that. You've been through a lot, but apparently not so much that... You couldn't feel you're making the right choice with him. What did he do for a living? He was a truck driver, or mm. is a truck driver. Okay. And you divorced him four years ago? I did. Okay. And who has replaced him? Um, I've dated a little bit on and off um, since dated. Okay. our divorce. We all know what dated means. <laughs> we we won't go into that very much there. We all know what dated means. So, all right. We all know what that means. Now, I'm being generous, but okay. Uh, by the way. What does the, dated mean? The last gentleman that you were dating, what did he do for a living? Uh, he owned his own moving service. He was a lot younger than I was, so. Oh, okay. So in other words, you got with a young fella 
for sexual benefits, but there was zero possibility it was going to be anything else. So you just basically say, well, hell, if I can't be with the one I love, let me just love the one I'm with. And there you go. No, it wasn't sexual benefits because I haven't. Okay. When I, how much younger than you was this kind of like, how much younger than you was this guy? This was just recent. So he was 32. Okay. You're 41. He's, Nine years younger than you. Yes. Okay. And I had so never in, been with a man younger than me before. Okay, of course you hadn't, but that's another thing right there. For for us men who are over middle age, we see that all the time. Uh, y'all are all out here. Y'all are all becoming cougars now in your 30s and everything. Y'all always talk about, we're not, I would never date a man younger. Yeah, you don't want a guy who's younger because you understand he can't do nothing for you. But when the men who will be, can do something for you are not biting and you're not eligible, all of a sudden you go on Facebook, Instagram, and everything else. These young fellas in their 20s can, have got all kinds of stories about you chicks in your 30s and 40s and 50s. So the, this isn't novel. This isn't new. This has been going on for decades now. It's easier than ever on the Internet. By the way, what city does he live in? Atlanta. We both live in Atlanta. Okay, well, that was easy to figure out. I'm not going to ask if he's moist or not. You're just going to say he ain't. I'd like to get the DNA on that. I know, that. he was very moist. That's why I didn't last. But you had sex with him. No, I did not. Why would you go out with... Why would you, now, you, now you don't want to claim having sex with him. What are you talking about? What were y'all doing then? Well, you know, we were just hanging out. He, I, I recently moved. Um, and like I said, you just you said dating. Reason, well, so. you no, no, no. You just said dating. First of all, you were alluding to sex before. Now you're going to trying to double back and oh, well, it wasn't sexual. No, I never told you we was having sex because I know we weren't. You said you were dating. I never said that. You said you were yeah, dating. So okay, well, well, okay, well, maybe we weren't dating. I guess oh, now this, may, this depends maybe on your definition we of oh, it. Boy. But we were hanging out. We I was were hanging out. I was seeing him. Now she's now she's trying to clean it up. She's trying to walk it back now. Now Say it's not. Is. Now it wasn't sex. Oh, well, she said she specifically said the word dating. Well, maybe we wasn't really dating. Now that I'm asking all these questions that she didn't know I could intuit all of this, baby. There's only one type of male who messes with a 41 year old single mom. I'm, I'm just. I'm not even being mean. I'm not trying to be mean about it. I'm just saying let's just be some grown ass folk and just call it what it is. When you tell me you you dealing with a younger fella, you dealing with a younger fella who ain't really got better options like that. So I and I know what those types are. We already know what kind those are. He's not. A, it's not a producer. He's not masculine. He doesn't have a lot of feminine options. He lives with his mama. His money ain't straight. He can't do nothing for you. Hell, he can't do nothing for himself. So he's easy pickings for you because he doesn't have very high standards, which comes in handy for you because you don't have a lot of leverage to demand high standards. And it is now, what it I, is. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree with what you're saying. First of all, he didn't live with his mom, so I do disagree with that. You don't know that. He has his own place. He got somebody's place. You don't know. Y'all wasn't even dating, so stop it. Okay, well, I mean, you're right. right. From what he told me, I didn't go to his house. It didn't last that long because it didn't last that long because it was just I started to notice things about him that I just did not want to deal with. So everything wait a minute, you started to notice. You wait, 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 wait. Right. What do you mean you started to notice? You started to notice what? I mean, I I started to notice, like you said, that he was moist and that he wasn't masculine and that maybe he just didn't have a lot of female options. Which okay, how did you? How did you? Me- somebody okay, 41. how did you meet him? Yeah, I was getting to that before you cut me off. I recently moved into a new place, and he um, and I called his company. He, he has a, a moving company that he just started in January, which I found that out when I, you know, began to talk to him more. Um, so he moved me into my new place. And then I think maybe like a month after I moved into my new place, maybe not even a whole month, he um, asked if, you know, he sent me a text message and was like, I hope this is not inappropriate, um, but I think you're super pretty, and I want to get to know you. And so I was like, yeah, okay. Stephanie? 
just out of curiosity, mm-hmm. just out of curiosity, just between you and me and a few thousand of our closest <laughs> friends, what what si- what size do you wear? What size do I wear? Yes. You said what size do I wear? Oh, I'm like a ten. Okay. Have you sent me a picture of you previously? I haven't. But when D Tubman asked me to call in, I went on ahead and took one for you. So because I knew you were gonna ask. For it. Okay. Well, you can just email that to handle the business at yahoo.com. You can just email that to me now. Uh, I would like to just take a peek just so I can confirm for my edification. I wouldn't want us to make any misgivings here. Baby, you was you let the damn moving man take his shot. He showed up at your place, your apartment one time. He was there long enough to move in. Fellas, what have I told y'all? If a guy is handy, if you're the plumber, the tow truck driver, the moving van driver, baby, they all up for grabs. The single moms are just hanging out here on trees. That's it. It's just you text them and there you go. No questions. She was like, "I d- well, how no, many no, dates? No, no. How many it dates wasn't did you one go?" Time. Yeah. My daughters, my daughters are grown, Jason. So how many dates did you go on I, with him? The way that, huh? How many dates did you go on with him? Like four. So you went on four dates with him. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So you, now she's claiming that I saw some things I didn't like and it took me four dates. No, baby, you was available. You was like, well, hell, the nigga swing his hips a little bit, but damn it, maybe we can make make this work. Just stop it. Gina. No, you. No, I was getting ready to respond to what you said about me him moving me one time, and then he just shot his shot. It wasn't like that. I was getting ready to say my daughters are grown. My daughters are nineteen and twenty one, so they each have their own places. So at the time when the girls decided that they were going to get their own places, it was at the time when we were all getting ready to move because they were living with me. So he moved my oldest daughter, and then he moved me, and then he moved my youngest daughter out of my house that I'm in now a month later. So I saw him, he saw me a few times. And isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? By the way, isn't that interesting? Your daughters are grown, but he didn't go Mm -hmm. for, uh, I'm assuming he didn't go for them, although he probably did. Oh, I she, think that's something they would have told me. Oh, you really? You think that's something they would have told you? Yeah. Well, my one daughter, the oldest one, she's having a baby. Well, had a baby. Okay. So at the time, is she, is she pregnant, married? So is she married? He wouldn't have talked to is her anyway. She, no, is she married? She, she is. She is not a no, proud, not. a proud family tradition continues. Thank you, Atlanta, the cesspool. In any case, if this guy yeah. was, if this guy was attractive enough for you to go on four dates with him, what makes you think that he was not attractive enough to your daughters also? He may have been, but what I'm saying to you is, you said he may have tried them, and I'm saying. I don't think that happened because and my I'm, daughters are not close enough for that them to have told me that. And I'm telling you, they are half your age. And he was shooting at yeah. you. He was he bypassed the females who were closer to his age so that he could go for their mom. Okay, well, you know what? Now that you're saying that, I guess I never thought about it like that. I'm not disagreeing with anything that you say. No, single I mean, moms. Understand that single moms because I was asked to. Single I'm moms just, don't want to think like that. They're like, oh hell, I don't want to think about it like that. Yeah, I'm just saying that that doesn't even really make a whole lot of sense. But I will say one thing: if this guy came to your place as many times as you claim he did. How in the world did you make it four dates with him before realize before his moist ways were intolerable? You clearly saw all those things the first time you saw him. Um, not really, because he was oh a bit he mean, he's attractive. He was a very charming guy. And I think that when I began to say things that maybe he was not on board with is when he really showed up. Things like what? 
Well, I would talk about, you know, stuff like what I believe in as far as relationship goes. I feel like, you know, I believe in the fact that the man is the head of the woman and, then, and you know, the man is the head of the household. And I would just talk about, you know, my old, that, that I was just very old-fashioned in the way that I view relationships. Okay, well, and what, was his, being 32, okay. what was his problem with that then? Because before you were saying that he was moist, now you're saying it's something else. I need you to get your story straight. Well, I'm not, I mean, my story is straight. I think that because he was moist, maybe he couldn't understand that. You think that, okay, so your problem is that you wanted, what, were you trying to like get a commitment? You were talking to him about having a committed relationship? Well, not necessarily with him. You no, know, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't say that. Both- you just, what you just said was that you were talking to him. Essentially, what you just said, you were talking to him about man being head of the household. This is the damn moving dude. You talking about him being head of the household. He just, he just discovered your household. And you're talking about a man being head of the household. Let's be clear. You walked in the door. And by the way, when Kitten Heels and the rest of these folk tell you, ladies, don't go out on a date unless you tell a man you want marriage. This is why that's silly to give but folk who don't know give y'all silly advice but by the way she found out that silly advice uh baby you don't go on a date with a fella talking about head of household and all that you don't do that but at your age i can understand why you would here's the problem the men who qualify and are actually a proper fit to be your head of household are older than you you're not eligible for them. I agree. So you attempted to imprint I agree. you attempted to imprint that responsibility on a guy who was younger than you. And you found out that ain't going to work because a younger man doesn't go to an older woman to be her head of household. There isn't any a, a younger man sees an older woman the best you could be looked at is a elder maternal figure he doesn't see you as a person he needs to take care of he sees you as a peer so that can never I work agree. it can that's what you needed but you you the, the options you have available now those options don't do those things that's the problem yeah, and I furthermore mean- it don't take no four days to figure out moist now she's trying to uh slander his name and say well i think he was moist no you're a 41 year old single mom and he knows the drill he knows he doesn't have to be your head of household he doesn't have to do anything for you you have no okay, well, i'm not trying to slander his name like i wouldn't do that to a man i totally own my part in what i have done to my life so i'm not trying to slander his name well, I'm we need to do whether i mess up or not we need to I, we need to introduce you know, he wasn't the one none of them are the one you divorce the one That was it, baby. That was your okay. last train leaving. You, baby, when y'all go off and go, y'all use your vaginas for an amusement park ride and you sit up here and throw them legs open for the bummiest, dumbest nigga you can find, when you all get pregnant, that's your max. That's your peak. That's the, the whoever the guy was got you pregnant. That was the best. That was your alpha. That was it for you. You peaked. And if you were so lucky that you ran into a fluke of nature, a freak of nature and a fluke of numerics that you were able to get a male who would play step daddy you supposed to cash in your winnings and leave the casino because there ain't gonna be okay so there are so not old. going well, stephanie there are not i want all the females listen to me not right now tonight to listen doesn't matter what your age is if you get one fella who wants to be step daddy you better hold on to him for dear life because there will not be a second who's going to sign up to be stepdaddy. You get one alpha, and if you're very lucky, you get one stepdaddy. You don't get two alphas, and you don't get two stepdaddies. Baby, you, you vomited all over your chips at the casino. You lost your alpha. You lost your stepdaddy. At this point right now, I need to tutor you and see if we can interest you in a side chick position. At this point right now, this is where we going from here. We steering <laughs> up the side chick lane. Well, listen, Jason, I mean, I'm not, I don't disagree with anything that you are saying. And that was initially what my 
you know, call was about, well, initially my call was because Dee asked me to call in. But I get it. I mean, I've been listening to your program for a long time. I've been listening to the program tonight. And when you talked about um, the It Girl, never lets go of being the It Girl, that's me. You know what I mean? But I didn't realize it until I heard Vivica talking about how she was Vivica Fox and now she's old and she just, she's done with. So I didn't You still haven't sent me your picture yet. Until I heard you. You still full of bull crap. You haven't sent me your picture yet. I'm still waiting. Oh, well, I mean, I've been, I, I, well, I have to put you on speakerphone to do it. Is that okay? Because I know you don't like for us to go on speaker. So can I put you on speaker to send you my picture? Oh, uh, sure. Why don't I just put you on a brief hold right quick here? Because I'm actually going to have to take another phone call here in just a moment. We'll put her on hold right quick. She's 41 years old and still trying to hang in there. Ladies, you get one alpha. That's the reason why Vivica is mad. Now, ladies, you get one alpha per lifetime. You get one. You can delude yourself into thinking you're just going to be cycling through them and have a Rolodex. No, you won't. Alphas have their pick of the litter. If the alpha gives you the nod and he says, I'm willing to take you off the market, that is it, ladies. That is the bell. That is the whistle. The alarm has sounded. Cash out your chips. You are done. Exit the casino with your winnings. Too many females out here are believing the crap that the media tells you, your grandmammy telling you, and every damn body else telling you these damn lies that you can live your life how you want to. No, you cannot. You will live your life by the rules presented. Ladies, you get one alpha, one alpha, and one alpha only. And that is all. That is it. Let me find out here. Now, somebody sent me a email. Let me find out. Area code 513. Is that you sending me this email? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. What's your name? This is Bandoria from Cincinnati. Have I talked to you before? Van from Cincinnati. Yes, you have. Yeah, I'm about to say, yes, I have. Now, what, what exactly is it you're trying to ask me? I don't understand what this is saying. I got a picture. I guess this is okay, you. Okay, the question what is, you is me? I hear you say on, the, on, on your uh, videos all the time or your broadcasts all the time that women um, that are past 30, um, usually it's over with for them. And I, I agree with you to a certain extent. However, I choose not to be with younger men, but younger men keep approaching me. So I went on ahead and saved a lot of time and sent you the picture right away. Okay, what do you I think they're okay? Might, what do you it. think they are approaching you for? Um, well, one of them sent me a picture of himself, and I don't, a picture I of him. Uh, go a picture of that. himself. A picture of himself in what way? Um. It's a picture of his of his um, uh, equipment. <laughs> okay. And now, now let me ask you one question here. Did you think that was a compliment? No, I was upset. Okay, there's my point. So when you say that, by the way, men younger than you approach you, do you think that's a compliment? That you're being um, actually, that you're being approached. Um, no, no. Let me just on just that one point alone. You said that you are getting approached by younger men. Do you think that that situation, those conditions? Do you think that those conditions are good? That that's a good condition to be in. No, I don't. I was shocked when he sent it to me. I was so shocked. I, I um. I, I was on the plane be, sitting between two people, didn't know who they were. And when I opened it up and looked at it, I had to hurry up and flip my phone over real quick. So okay. how did, and your, wait, 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 wait a second. Uh, how did he get you, acquainted huh? to you? How did he get acquainted to you to be, be able to send you something like that? Um, We were in the same religion at that time. Okay. And you wanted to ask me what? I wanted to ask you, um, why would young guys his age 
why do you think that they would want to be with or want me to be with them um, at my age when they're so young, so like little boys to me? Well, you can say they're little boys to you, but if they're younger, that's a status symbol for them. Sex is still new to them. As a female, you've been getting sexually approached since you were a young teenager, in some cases, adolescence. So for you, sex is not new. It's not an accomplishment. You get a lot of opportunities. With literally with any male your age all the way to dead, you have had those options. Young men don't have that. So if they're able to get an older female, that's a, a status symbol at their age because he doesn't have any financial accomplishments. He doesn't have any social accomplishments. All he's got are the opportunity of sexual accomplishments. And that's it. Okay. So, and I should know I was there. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was, I'm just saying, okay. I mean, I, I was a young man. All my girlfriends were in their thirties, forties and fifties. And it was a status symbol. It certainly, it certainly is when you're around the guys who are your age and whatnot and your girlfriends, all oh, they got Lexuses and their own houses and whatnot. It's a status symbol until you get your own. Let me say that part. Yeah, it's a status symbol until you get your own. Then the way you see them starts to change. And unless you really just got a thing for, quote, older women, you're you're going to phase out of that real quick. So just okay. just understand, and, uh, just understand, this is very common. It's not rare. Baby, Facebook is, Facebook is... Is, is, is the season, the Cougars playground over there for dudes looking to run up on chicks. It's, it's everywhere. It's rampant. It is not rare. It is very commonplace. This is the situation now. And if, if you shoot your shot at four females over the age of 40, you're going to hit at least two of them. I mean, that the, the ratios are not high. Everybody knows the deal. Everybody knows most of these females are alone. Everybody knows that. It's no secret. It's no secret that their options are very limited. So she's, a lot of y'all have just been hanging out there so long. It's like the previous caller is just like, well, damn, you're in a constant drought. The men your age, if you don't have one who's made an attachment to you, he's not going to break resources with you because he's not invested in you. So what's the point? So all that leaves is a bunch of young dudes looking to lay up and a bunch of older dudes looking to lay up. And ah. that that's where it is. It's very commonplace now. So, I mean, that is the situation. So if a young fella is trying to talk to you, man, if the rules don't change, if he ain't, if he's not accomplished, if he hasn't gotten to know you, because at this point right now, it's not like you're having children to start in the family. Mm -mm. So just understand if he's looking to, prove something to himself oh to prove something to himself okay sure because i thought it was disrespectful <laughs> well it, he, he doesn't care if you like it or not he's not there for your enjoyment that's the other part uh, of it okay he's not there for your enjoyment he's there he's got his own agenda so stay out the bushes <laughs> well, one more question. Uh, well, one more thing I needed to tell you right quick is another reason why I sent it is because I had just lost 25 pounds and I'm working on the rest of it. And I'm starting on today, June the 1st. So I guess I need somebody to make sure they make sure I stay on point this time, losing the rest of the weight because <laughs> I'm really excited about getting back down to the size that I used to be when I was um, 18. Well, that is good. Uh, how old are we now? I'm 61. Okay. You're 61. Mm -hmm. And you want to get down to the size you were when you were 18. And just out of curiosity, yeah, I, just, I felt better. just between you and me, at 61, what are you expecting to happen when you get down to the size? I'm, I'm I'm doing it for my health this time. Well, now there's a good reason. 
If we got to get older, there's no reason to be broke down and older. <laughs> I agree. And I've been feeling really, really extra good. And But I noticed when I put on a little few more, uh, too many pounds, I felt like, okay, it's time to start losing it again and getting back down um, a lot smaller. But I really do feel good at my age and the size that I am right now. Well, I had a 49-year-old but, dude. Um, I had a 49-year-old dude earlier who claims he once met Vivica Fox. So maybe I can hook y'all up. Once you get down to fighting weight, I can see if I can hook y'all up and everything. So he, since he's used to. Oh Lord! The celebrities, we'll we'll see if we can make that happen. <laughs> but uh, def, definitely keep me keep me abreast of your progress. I'll be glad to check on it. Thank you. You have a great day. You take care now. I told y'all, Grandma's gone wild out here. All right, Stephanie, I got your picture. <laughs> Baby, what the hell? Oh, you, what I the hell you to, think I he? Did, I did want... What do you think he gonna do with this? Go ahead. What, what do you mean? What do you think he going to do with it? What do you think the moving I man, what do you think the moving man, man going to do with this? Going to do with what? Baby, you thought y'all was just going to hang out and uh, play Madden? What's wrong with my picture? I, I'm not, all I'm saying here is, okay, you're not a size 16. I get that. But all right, what did you think was No, nah, I don't think it's a moist situation. I think it's a, you know, hell, I got four chicks up in here. All of them are sexually active, clearly. How could I possibly lose? That's what he was thinking. And he wasn't wrong, but what he didn't count on is that Stephanie thought she could get another husband right quick and she scared him off. So I'm going to recommend in the future don't scare no more of moth, Stephanie. We got to get you this side chick. Okay. App. We got to get your side chick application filled out so we can at least get somebody to fill in here. Well, here's the thing, though. I'm not really looking to be oh, in a relationship or side chick. That or don't or help. Anybody. But that my don't question, help. Hold on. I, I'm, I'm asking you a question. When you say what do what did I think he was gonna do with this? What does that mean? Because the picture that you have at my um, loctician, I have locked, so my loctician just came by today and did my hair. So the picture that you have is my hair very fresh and it's up in curls because I'm gonna take the rollers out tomorrow and my hair will be curly. So what you got there is just my hair really fresh and back. I'm trying to understand what you mean by what was he going to do with this. Stephanie, I think the world of you. You look like a 41-year-old single mom. What did you think he was going to say when you started talking about being head of household? What did you think was going to happen? Well, it was just a conversation. I would, no, you it wasn't. My no, it wasn't. That was not a conversation. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. I'm answering your question. You were not, that was not a conversation. You were putting him on notice of what your intentions were. And I'm like, that's cool. That's okay. But what do you think's going to happen when you do that? What did you expect him to say? It's okay. not about him being moist, baby. It's about the fact that, look, at this stage right now, what he was offering, that's what you qualify for. So I got to I gotta get with you so we can be honest about what you can actually get. Because the real issue I got so right now is... So why is it that that's what I qualify for? Baby, you're 41 years... You, because you left you, the only man who would give you more, you divorced him. For unknown reasons. For immature reasons. That was the last train leaving. That's it. You don't, you don't have the ability to get anybody to invest. You're 41 years old. A man can't start a family, and even if he wanted to, he has far better options. How much of a rate of return... What is the return that a man can get on a 41-year-old that he just met? He just met you. He didn't meet you at 30 and get even get the benefits of that. He's met you at 41. So any man who meets you now, 41, with your two daughters who are both grown... What's what's the return on that investment he's going to get at 41? Help me to understand. I mean, I don't really, I, what I'm saying to you is that it's nothing for me to help you to understand because I don't care. Like I'm not in the I'm not looking for somebody to come in and take care of me. I take very good care of myself. I have my own business. I I do well for myself. If you didn't care so why you're dating. All I want If you didn't care why are you hmm? date if you didn't care why are you dating? 
I wouldn't necessarily. Okay, well, maybe the dating word see, that I okay. used. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. If you we can't were, be we honest, out, we why out. are you hanging out with you won't men? You let me finish. You asking me a question. You won't let me finish. Why are you hanging <laughs> out? Why are you hanging out with the moving man and talking to him by the head of household if you ain't looking to be with somebody? Okay, because it was what we were talking about at the time. So we were just having a conversation. That does not necessarily mean I was trying to get him to do that. Okay, so you're telling me that you, when you went, you already said you went out with him. Where'd you go out with him to? We went to the movies. Okay, we had, thank you. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you. This is what I mean. This type of intellectual dishonesty, this is why we can't help y'all. Because you're sitting here telling me that you went on a date, and then one that when you don't like the fact the circumstances under which is happening, then you're gonna go back and say, "Oh, we wasn't really on a date." Nobody can help you with this type of blatant intellectual personal dishonesty. You're insulting every ma'am, Stephanie. You are insulting everybody's intelligence right now with what you're saying. This is an insult to our intelligence. You were dating this so guy. What is it that you, were, what is- you were interested in this guy. You were evaluating him for something more personal. You were not interested in him just staying your moving man. You went out on four dates with him to evaluate his potential to be more than just the moving man. You don't want to be alone. Okay. Well, I will say this. When we went out on the four dates, I guess I would. I was trying to see where it would go because Dang, I went that's on the obvious. four dates with him. That's obvious. But okay, but after talking to him and the things that he would say, just I mean, even his demeanor, I would just know that no, this ain't. I don't want this to go nowhere. But so it took you. It, didn't, it took you four that tries. Is when I decided. Hmm? It took you four tries to see that. I won't necessarily say it took me four tries because I wouldn't sit here saying, let me go out on a date with him tonight and see if I can get him to commit. Okay, well, maybe tonight I can go out on a date with him and see if I can get him to commit. But you commit. were expecting okay, well, something. Here's the third date. Let me see if I can get him but to commit. But you were I'm hoping for something. Um, I, I run my own service. So I'm just like around. He asked me to go out with him on these four outings. I went. I because you don't want to be. You went so out went. with. You went out with him because you don't want to be alone. You are looking to be. Um, you are looking to be with somebody. It is a lie for you to say you don't care. You're doing everything you can to be with somebody. The lie is saying you don't care. And I'm just saying nobody can help you if you're gonna look us in the eye and lie to us. That's an insult to our intelligence. Okay. You so are maybe, trying to be with so, somebody. So you're right. Maybe I shouldn't say. Maybe I shouldn't say I don't care. Maybe I should just say that what I won't do is go out with another guy looking to be in a relationship with him. I won't look at it that way. I agree. I just, just I, I think at this point it would just be, you know, I'm just I just want you to be my friend for a while and no. we'll see where it goes. No. Because no. That, no. Because we already that, know where I'm it's going to go. What I'm saying. We already know where it's no, huh? you're de- that's delusion. I'm saying we got to get you past your delusion. We already know where I'm it's not going. Delusional. I you are delusional <laughs> if you think it's going to go somewhere. That's my point. Well, let's be friends and see where it goes. No, it's already made it where it's going to go. You're already at your destination. You're wasting time deluding yourself into believing that there's something else coming. No, the ride is already over. What you need to accept is that you shouldn't be going out there looking for a relationship. You're right. You should be looking for a transaction, not a relationship. And you are going to waste the few years you got left to even secure a transaction. You're about to lose those. And at that point, okay. it's nothing so you, but rerun to the mean? Golden Girls. You say I should be looking for a transaction. What does that mean? You need to find a fellow who fools with you for real and is willing to take you on a trip to the Bahamas once a year when his wife ain't in town. 
I ain't about to mess with nobody's husband, so that's not happening. Okay, I didn't say go look for somebody's see, husband. See, see. I didn't say go look. I'm saying that a little tongue in cheek, but my point is you need to get in where you fit in with whatever type of arrangement that you can set up. See, that's but see, that's my whole issue with that was I guess now that you bring that up, that's kind of my whole issue. But with you're already the there. Why I left that. That's the huh? crazy. That's the crazy part. All you single moms who have lived your entire lives doing this, y'all don't want it unless you can lie about it. When the men walk in the door and say, "Okay, let's just be straight up and say this is what you are," no, that ain't what I am. You've lived your whole life doing it, but you want to get offended when we just say, "Hey, let's just call it what it is." Now nah, I'm better than that. While you live your life by it, you've lived I, your whole saying, life Jason, this way. Listen, I keep saying, I I said to you multiple times on the phone that I agree with you. I have said that. What I'm saying is you tell women to go off and be a side chick for somebody's husband. I'm not trying to be nobody's side. Okay. Nobody's, um, uh, ma'am, I'm not like, going to... That's disrespectful to a wife. Okay, fine. I, I, I literally said, don't go looking for somebody's husband. I was being facetious kind of about that part but what i am saying is baby it doesn't matter what the situation is you got to get in where you fit in this idea that you're going to be you're going to be able to do have the options your daughters do where you can just meet a guy and quote see where it goes baby that ship has sailed and sunk you gave that up with your baby daddy you gave that up two and decades I said, ago and i said that i agree with you jason but what i'm saying is even if i go out on a date if even if i go even if i be friends with a guy i still got to get to know his character no, i still got to get to know no, who he is no, that does not mean no. oh, so i'm just supposed to go out here and get with a serial killer cuz i'm a 41 year old single mom i hope he's I don't not, need to get to know this guy ma- no you need to all you need to know is if he fools with you for real you ain't got the option to be picky who the hell you think you are you ain't got the option to be picky Baby, you forty one so with two kids. You down? He, you are down and out. That he I'm listening. You are down and out. You forty one years old. It, it, you trying to throw a hail mary, baby? This buzzer beater ain't gonna happen. You need to get a fellow who fools with you for real. And he, what if he's a serial killer? As long as he ain't trying to kill you. I'll take that as a plus, okay? Let's let's start there, all right? If he, as long as he doesn't pull the knife on you, then we can work with that, <laughs> baby. You ain't got the option of being no. this damn. You listen to me. You're 41 year. You're a single 41 year old single mom divorcee, and you're still trying to talk like you can be picky. Do you hear yourself? I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I know that I can't be picky. I agree with you. On you that. ain't talking what like I it. You was, I feel like the better option for me is just to slow it down just a little bit, not try to figure out a relationship with a guy upon meeting him and just figure out who he is a little bit. Let me get to know him. I don't You're 41 like, hey, years. Whoa, whoa. Wanna, uh, That's the other thing. On. That's the other thing. You're 41 years old. It shouldn't take you no four damn meetings a guy meetings of a guy to sit up here and know what he's about if you're 41 and can't figure it out on meeting number one you just don't need to be out here and you just need to take the first thing that comes along and figure out how to be happy with it because your judgment cannot be relied on if you're 41 you should be able to figure out everything you need to know on the first date if you're still this unseasoned at this point in your life just get you with a fella who is not suicidal nor homicidal and has reliable employment and take your winnings and go home. When you get with, when you, no, I'm telling you the rule for you. The rule is you don't get to ask any questions. What if, (laughs) if he takes, if he's willing to fool with you, you don't ask any questions. You let him know you there for him anytime, any place, no questions asked. That's where you are. I need four dates to figure out if a guy is moist, if he really fools me for real. 41 years old and still this novice, this this incapable at 41. Baby, if that's a true statement, you just need to grab a dude who's got gainful, reliable employment. If he's within three or four years of retiring, 
Cash in your chips and leave the casino. You're done. You're done. And I am so real. I want to see you have something because right now you are on the road to rerun to the Golden Girls and five Golden Retrievers in your damn house. That's what you're on the road to. So can I ask a question? You saying that because I'm 41 years old and I'm a single mom? You drew that from that? that I, that's what I need to do? I'm just asking. Ma'am, I mean, this this is this isn't just me talking. I'm saying I'm a guy in my 40s. We ain't checking for that. Nobody is hurting themselves to take that off the market. Everybody's trying to avoid it. Since you know that's the situation, you got a huge handicap. You're talking like it don't exist. I'm telling you, acknowledge okay. it exists. Acknowledge that that's where you are at. Because right now, you ain't happy. You literally went out for four dates with the damn me moving man. That's just how serious... What the being a moving man? That's how serious about not being alone and having a male companion you are. But you act like I told you I went out on four dates with a guy that works at McDonald's. Do you what's think wrong? you're I mean, what's okay? Wrong with he? You would have been better. It would have been better. I don't care where the guy came from, baby. They ain't. None of them are knocking themselves over to demand to to conform to what you want. Nobody's trying to take the place of your ex husband, and you clearly want that, and you that. And you're all you're I doing don't is necessarily know that I need it. Okay. All right. I'm saying like I, I I I'm saying that I don't really feel like I need somebody to take the place of my ex husband because you would have to understand what my marriage is like with my man. Oh no, so, I'm looking at you now. You I, want to have a man now, and you've been talking and lying like you don't. Yes, you do. And I am telling you the protocol and conditions under which you will have one. This isn't my opinion. You're over 40, so am I. I'm telling you what the men in my age range are looking for. And you know every word I'm saying is true. So you can waste more years pretending that you're going to get some unicorn, some fictional male, or we can actually use the little bit of time you do have left. Because side chicks have a longer shelf life than wives do. You can waste the little time you got or you can use it valuably and wisely and leave the casino with a few chips. You can't leave with the jackpot you would have had 20 years ago, but at least now you could leave with a few chips. I ain't got to lie to you. I want to see you win. I, you just need to be clear about what there is left to win. And if you believe that a 41-year-old single mom divorcee who's wasn't able to tell that the moving man might have had a little sweetness on him after four date, four visits to her home and then four subsequent dates, eight encounters with this man before she figured out something might be wrong, if you think a man of means who can do something for you or is any way occupies a better socioeconomic status than you, if you think he's going to make that his preferred option, good luck. You're going to well, need Well, I'm it. not saying that I did figure that out before four dates. I'm okay. not saying that. What that just means, what that means is that I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not saying that I didn't see things in him that I didn't like before um, we went, you know, before we had eight encounters. Okay, or let's, let's, just settle, let's just that. settle, let's just settle the question. That, let's just settle the question here. Do you have a problem with being a side chick if you can find the right guy? I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then then at going forward, I need you to adopt that mindset. The only thing you screwing up at is you asking too many damn questions. All you need to know is does he work? What does he drive? And is he willing to spend some of it on me? After that, you're done talking. That's it. <laughs> If you follow that game plan, you got a shot. 
Don't talk about no head of I house. Complete. Don't talk about no head of household. Don't talk about your religion. Don't talk about none of that. That's it. Does he have a, a little money, a little job, and a little willingness to spend it on me? Cash out. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight here. Ladies, it, just understand where you are is all I'm really saying. Just understand where you really are. I ain't Jason being mean. I ain't being mean. Somebody needs to tell the damn truth in here. Let these other folks lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Let these other folks lie and make things up. Let them sit up here and play around about it. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. You need somebody who's going to give you the real. And we got women going into this. Is what I'm talking about. These young women, how the hell, how the hell you think you're going to be able to compete with them and, and, and that kind of stuff going on? That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. You can't just sit up here and, oh, let the decades go by. And well, I was with a guy. I was with a guy. I was with two guys, but I didn't like it. Okay, do you like where you at now? Do you like where you're at now? Is, is this where you thought you were going to end up at? Are you okay with where you're at? I'm just asking for a friend. It's too many of y'all who don't understand. You ain't got no more chips to play, man. And then you sit up here and let folk lie to you and pretend you got some chips on the board left to play, baby. Ain't, ain't no chips left to play. Let's stop talking silly. Let's figure out we can get you what you can actually have. Let's get that for you. Let's get you something you can actually have. Let's get you something you can actually keep. Let's get you something you can actually use. All right, I want to see if I can call somebody right quick. I want to make a phone call because I got somebody who wants to speak to me. So I want to see if I can get them on the line. Uh, is this Lori? Hello? Yes, this is she. Hello, Lori. You're on live on the business. You contacted me because you were interested in finding out something. Um... What exactly was it you were interested in finding out? Well, um, oh, I'm sorry, so I can hear myself. Is it me or? There might be a slight echo for it. I'll turn it down for you a little bit, but you sound okay over okay. here. It's, it's not echoing on my end, so that's the most important thing. So um, what did you want to ask me? Okay. All right, um... I could to hear myself, but I'm going to try to continue. But I just think I wanted to know, as far as, like, where I stand. I've been listening to your podcast for a few months now. And, you know, after listening uh, tonight, I just realized that I'm not a fan of those people. I never really checked out. <laughs> um, and, and, okay, you know, I don't know if you have me on. I don't know if you have me on speaker or something, but um, you sound really hollowed out and far away from your phone. So if you're on speaker... You need to take it off a of speaker. Okay, is it better? Yes, that's better. So what exactly was it you wanted to oh. ask me? Okay, I just basically wanted to know, like, where I stand um, when it comes to if, if I still have a chance. Um, you know, I, I, I believe I was one of those people that didn't check out. And um, had I known what I know now, I would have done things a little differently. Um, so now I'm just basically trying to, you know, not make the same mistake while I still can um, correct those. Okay, let's find out a couple of things here first. How old are you? 26. Okay, you're 26. And um, yes, sir. just for my edification, because I have a little information, but um, are your people originally from here, from the States, or are they... Uh, from somewhere else somewhere else islands okay um and here's the reason why i ask here um 
I saw your pictures, and so you want to, uh, you were asking me to give you a ranking? Yes. Okay, okay. Can I, let me find out first of all, now, for those of you who hadn't seen it, um, because you're not going to see it, I'm not going to show you her pictures or whatever, because she hasn't given me permission for that, um, she's a fitness competitor, uh, pretty damn good one too, as a matter of fact, so... That comes in very damn handy. So as far as physically is concerned, uh, you certainly don't have a bunch of issues there. So that's great. Okay. But why are you asking at 26? Why are you asking these questions at 26? What's what's prompted that? Well, um, because I had a different mind a um, couple years ago. Um, I, I, I guess you could say during my younger years i had this thought well i'm gonna be young forever i have time and i can just live it up you know not doing anything crazy but just didn't understand what i had at the time i was dating a uh, i guess you could say a high value man and he would shake his head because he understood that hey yeah you don't have you don't have time I'm like what are you doing and i basically wasn't trying to get with his program at the time um, well, how, how that how that work out? It didn't. We are friends now. No, um, you're not. So, but now I'm. No, you're not. Friends. No, you're not. You're just telling yourself that. But go ahead. Well, well, we do we do communicate. We actually. We, do you okay, think? So let me let me ask you. A, I, let me ask you a question here. Do you think that just because okay. a man talks to somebody, and I'm not talking about to females, do you think that okay. when when we as men are willing to accept a phone call, that that means that we that we are friends with that person? No, no, I'm very well aware. Um, I just had to make some. I, I had to basically. Um, I I had to put in work get that so it wasn't like hey a phone call nothing like that i had to put a work for myself you know as far as um trying to get therapy and going through that and handling some issues that i have on my own just to better myself becoming more uh submit submissive and understanding that okay this whole miss independent do this do that it's not it's not gonna cut it when it comes to trying to get a you know a man to be a protective provider. That is very and true. So I had to pretty much um, reprogram myself because I was programmed to, you know, go to school and focus on that and get your education, do what you can, you know. And when you're ready, you know, when I'm ready, then when you're ready, come, of course, when you're ready, the universe will reward you. So your parents taught you more of a religious conviction. And don't worry. The universe will just work things out. And then you found out that it is not the way it is that people have free will, including the free will to not be what you want them to be. So, no, yes, you could do every, you could do everything, quote unquote, right and still not get what you want. Yes. And granted, I don't have any problems with attracting men. And like you always say, like men will. You I, know, women need to change that. Women, women need to matter. change that. Women need to change that statement. No woman has a problem attracting sex. Yeah, that's what I just tried to now, say. Yeah, what, so that has always been there for me. But um, is there for everybody? That that's women's consolation prize to themselves. When women feel when reality starts crushing down on them and they start wanting to be in denial, they they resort back to well, at least I can get some sex. But then they tell themselves, oh, it, that's not really what it is. Yeah, that is really what it is. Um, if a man really wants you. He brings something other. He approaches you with something other than sex, but I think now what you're saying is, eh, I, I guess what's really prompting this. Can we just be honest? What's really prompting this is you're. Are you really trying to say, Jason? I'm getting a lot of offers for sex, but I'm not getting a bunch of offers for anything more serious. Well, um, I'm a little bit both um, because. Another thing, too, is that because I wasn't really brought up and had that example of what um, that looked like, you know, what the man really looked like and how they, you know, how a woman's supposed to, you know, um, treat them, that man and everything like that, it's hard for me to identify that. So I, I, I believe I made some mistake by um, just maybe not seeing it or, um, losing out on some of those because I I wasn't taught those things. So now I'm trying to learn. Okay, 
how to recognize the potential and how to recognize okay. Okay, when I need to. Let me settle. let me help you out here, okay? And I'm the guy who's blunt about these things, but I'm short on time. Uh, let me help you out here. First of all, learn to be a lot more brief. And let me tell you why that is. I literally just asked you two yes or no questions in a row. You didn't actually answer those. You went off on a tangent. So you certainly want to talk. But just understand, for men, especially a man in a leadership position, he doesn't really want to hear you go on and on. Women establish value with valuable men by their ability to listen not by their ability to talk. You can talk when you've got answers, but if you've got nothing but questions and yet you're doing a lot of talking, you're venting. Well, venting has its place in this world, but there's a difference between venting and vomiting. And if you're doing a bunch of talking and you got no answers, eh, we're vomiting. So let me try this again. You said, uh, is, can we, can we assume that what you're really trying to get at is saying, Jason, I'm getting a lot of men offering me, I'm, I wanted to talk to you because I'm getting a lot of men offering me sex, but they're not offering me any commitment. It's certainly not a commitment coupled with resources. Would that be a fair statement to say? Yes. Right. And the sooner we can get to the point in life, because life is limited, the sooner we can get you all to real answers. Um, because before when you said that, you said, well, no, actually, I kind of get both. No, you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't be on this phone with me. You'd be with the guy offering you the commitment with the resources because the problem is already solved. You wouldn't be calling me asking for help with a problem that you already have a solution to. If you already had an option, you'd be there. The issue is we don't have the options. Let me ask you here, do you have any children? No. What do you do for a living besides work out a lot? I am a trainer and I also do security. Okay. Well, I hope security that's office. I hope that's not a turn off, but we'll see about that. Now, here's the thing I want to find out here from you. What what do, what ranking do you feel that the men give you? An eight. Okay. Are you getting eight results? Uh, when you say eight results for sex or for... Okay, there's my, man, there's my man right there. I mean, being an eight isn't just sexual. What I'm saying is that if you, I asked you, what do the, what ranking do the men give you? You very quickly responded, oh, they give me an eight. And then I asked you, are you getting the results that an eight gets? And you didn't say yes. You said, well, uh, do you mean sexually? So. Well, yes, I would say yes, I am. Okay. I, I get that. What are the results that an eight gets? Well, um, when it comes to maybe if they're going out, they tend to get things uh, free or they may not be like they may not have to pay their way through things. They get compliments. Um, sometimes they get men to do things for them. To no, ma'am. You're talking. OK, ma'am, you're talking about know. favors. One of these programs, I'm going to have to break down what the difference between eights, tens, and all the rest of y'all. Because oh, women who are legitimate eights, much less legitimate tens, men buy them cars and houses. Men demand that she leaves her job because he wants that fine woman around him all the time. Men finance her life because... His return on that investment is that he gets an 8 or a 10. He's got a 1 percenter life. If you're an 8 or a 10, that makes you a 1 percenter female. Definitely top 5% or 10% at the very least. So a top 10% female is supposed to be getting with top 10% men 
But if she's in the top of the top 10%, those men express that by showing her that she lives a top 1% life. And I didn't hear any of that. I just heard, well, men hold doors for me and every once in a while they might do me a favor. That's not what eights and tens get. Eights and tens get cars, houses. They get men offended that she would try to spend a dollar of her own. They make it clear to her that he values her. He has a numerical value on her. Not a guesstimation. So what is the highest numerical value that a man has put on you in the last six months. I haven't had that in the last six months. How about the last 12? How about the last 24? I don't know. The only thing I've gotten was the things that I said before. So I haven't had any. Okay. Like, and yeah, here's the thing. Other stuff like right that. now, yeah. age wise and everything, I can see why you wanted to talk to me because right now, age wise, you're supposed to be in the thick of things. You're supposed to be in the middle of it. You're, you're at that peak value age. And right now you're on the last year of it. If you could stretch it from here, you just get older. And the way that the men treat you changes markedly from even what you're getting now. 90 seconds. So do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you said you don't have any children, correct? No. Have you ever been pregnant? No. That no came real weak and meek. Let's try this again. Are you no. sure you've no, never sir. been pregnant? Not even for a little bit? No, sir. Okay. And what 60 seconds. And tell me specifically what type of man you believe you belong with. Um, well, I believe I belong with um, someone that that I have um, certain things in common with um, that I don't want to say my values, but I just need to be able to have just someone that understand me and when, and what I do when it comes to fitness and health and stuff like that. That's another thing that I feel like I struggle with. Okay. Um, Go on. 10 seconds. And of course, um, someone that wants a partnership, someone that wants to settle, someone that wants to take on um, that responsibility of having that person as their wife and someone that's ready to get with their program. Wait a minute, someone who's ready to get with their program? No, somebody that, right now, what I'm saying is, I want someone that understand and know that I'm ready to get with their program. Okay. So far out of everything you just said, only one of those was something that a man would be interested in. But the real problem is you're never going to get there. And the reason why is because you're not specific. I want a guy who okay. values fitness. I want a guy I have something in common with. I want a guy who... Those are all emotional things. And here's my fear. You do realize that any fast talking dude out there could talk you straight out your draws out of the requirements you just gave. Nothing you gave was actually a real mature substantive requirement. You didn't say I need a guy who makes a certain amount of money, a man who has a certain amount of accomplishment, a man with a certain level of intellect, a man with a certain level of social consciousness. You didn't say any of that. Just, well, if he makes, these, these are very immature answers is what I'm saying. I would expect this from a 13 year old, but at 26, I'm just saying, and I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm not trying to be belittling. I'm not trying to be denigrating or condescending. 
You wanted my honest answer. I'm just letting you know. These are not answers that an adult woman is supposed to give because you're supposed to be forward looking. What type of life do you want to live? And what role does he play in it? And when you get asked that question, the answer is supposed to be, what house do you want to be in? What neighborhood? How many days a week do you want to have to work? What type of car do you want to drive? Do you want to live a life where you vacation when you want? Or do you want to live a life where you vacation if you can? And if you're not specific, specific about who that man is, you'll never get him. So you have to be very specific. Do I want a man who makes $50,000 a year and as long as he's got washboard abs, we got that in common, so I can live with everything else. Okay, if that's truly where you are and that's truly what you feel, that's fine. That's fine. Let that be what it is. Let that be what it is. I just didn't want to go rambling or anything, but... I mean, obviously, of course, I want those. No, 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 it's it's not. No, it's not obviously. No, it is not obviously because I asked you and you said what you really meant. What you really meant was, well, I want a guy who makes me feel a certain way. You, You named a number of different things and you weren't short. You were not short in those things. All the stuff you mentioned were intangible, but most of all, emotional. So you want a guy who first and foremost caters to you emotionally. You didn't think it over until I started saying, by the way, what type of physical life will you be living? Oh, well, damn. Uh, well, you know, he got to have that too. No, he doesn't. Because when I asked you what it was, you named your priorities. The first things that came to your mind, well, we got to have something in common and you know, we need to have compatibility and okay. You didn't say he needs to be a protector, a provider. I need to make sure the rent is paid every month so that I can focus on my physical fitness. You didn't say that because that's not what you're... Pri- oh, yeah, you also said a partnership. So let's not try to clean it up now. You said what you meant, a partnership. Oh, well, we can be 50-50. Yeah, that's how you end up with a guy... Working at five guys with washboard abs and dreams of being a trainer to the stars. Talking you out your draws in your 20s. Because you don't know how to identify a fellow who's actually accomplishing anything. Because he's stroking your ego. And he's emotionally placating you. So, I mean, you know, for some of y'all with your upbringings and whatnot, it's left you all emotionally deficient in a lot of ways. And you're looking for somebody to fill that gap. And I understand that. But just understand, the things that break up relationships usually aren't emotional. The number one cause of divorce is financial. So, out of everything you said, most of that was not something he can use. A man who's an authority and in charge... He's not look. He can't be in charge, and at the same time, you all have a partnership. A producer is not looking for a partnership. He's looking for a dictatorship. Now, are you ready for that? I believe I am. Then why don't you have it? Well, at this moment, like I said earlier, um, I'm just trying to get myself together as far as um, handling some other things Um, in my childhood, trauma, everything like that. I just need to make sure I'm ready for that person. And to go back, that's why I mentioned previously a lot of things that you mentioned that I didn't say that I want and trying to clean up. Those are the things that I wasn't taught or I had to you know just figure it out and now I'm hearing it and it's like okay yeah these are some of the issues that I you know that I'm having or coming across this is how I was taught to believe that I need to do this and I need to do that so um, I'm just now learning to unravel and 
pretty much, you know, figure all this out. Well, let me make sure you understand a few things here. The things that bother a woman most about the man, when you're young, you're looking for a guy who's like you. And that's a sign of immaturity to look for somebody who can be, you know, your little playmate. Playmates need to be like you. A, a proper relationship is somebody who fills in the gaps that you don't have. You don't need a man who is like you. You want one who understands you, but you really need to prioritize having somebody who brings the things to the table that you don't have. You don't need somebody who doubles down on what you already got. You want someone who's agreeable? Sure. You need some points of commonality? Sure. This finishing each other's sentences and all that old fairy tale Disney bullcrap? Forget that. You need you really need to look for a guy who's got the stuff you don't have. You bring the washboard abs and you let him bring the bank account. You bring the banging body and the sex appeal. You let him bring the social accomplishment. You bring the looking cute. You let him bring the heavyweight and, and real estate. That's what you let him do. Get you a fellow who you want to do all this stuff here. Get you a fellow who can finance your damn life. Get you a fellow who can upgrade your life. This idea that he needs to be the male version of you. Oh, I want a guy who's in the fitness and whatnot. Get a fellow who appreciates fitness you keep the washboard abs in the delts and, and, and the trapezoid. You keep that. You keep the, well, you're a female, 12% body fat. I suppose about where you're at, 12 or 10. A little bigger, but All right, somewhere something in there. like that. All right, thank you. So She's somewhere in there. You bring the, for a female, 12% body fat. You let him, you bring the non-fat body, let him bring the fat bank account. But, it's immature to be sitting up here looking for a guy who's going to be your playmate. You want a man to be your leader, not your playmate. He doesn't have to sit up here and have washboard abs. He needs to have the fittest damn bank account. He needs to have social accomplishment. He needs to have the desire to get up every day and make your life better. Not your idea of your life being better. You need a man who gives you freedom and security, which sometimes can be anathema, but you need a man who works to make sure you got that because that is what keeps women up at night. You need to go talk to some women outside your family, not the ones in your family. You can't rely on them. Go talk to some women outside of your family who are older than you. Go find some 40 year old women older than you and ask them what it is that broke up their marriage. Ask them what it is they wish they had had or wish he would have done the dumb ones will respond with emotion they're the ones who at their advanced ages still ain't grown up the smart ones will tell you i need to find i wish i'd have stayed if he didn't work enough i chose a guy who was cute he was great in bed we could hang out and talk till the sun came up then why'd you get divorced he wouldn't get a job he wanted me or the job he had that was it we were living in a bad neighborhood or I felt life could be better. He never upgraded me. I never felt when a woman says she doesn't feel appreciated. What she really means is she's never felt like she could stunt on her friends. Not even once. What she's saying is I didn't have a man who raised my status as a female. Your body raises our status as men. As our female representative, your body raises our status and we put a numerical value on that that's the difference we can put a numerical value on your body raising our status our body don't really raise your status like that now the guy shouldn't be obese sure but just understand a fellow with washboard with flat abs and a flat bank account baby he just took your value down and you know this. What you hang yeah. out at the gym all the time with a bunch of broke dudes yeah. trying to sleep with everybody because that's what they do at the gym. 
Yeah, they're trying to get by on sex appeal alone. As a female, you're supposed to be smart enough to understand, eh, I can't spend your sex. Your sex appeal doesn't increase my value except marginally. Now, if your sex appeal is coupled to a bank to a bank account and accomplishments, now as a man, you've raised my status. Because you've got something that most men don't have. Most men only have a body. A few men have the financial and social resources, and then the very few have the body and the financial and social resources. But the most worthless thing in the world is a guy with flat abs and no resources. And as a 26-year-old female, you're supposed to know that. You're supposed to know that yeah, now. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I do. I do. Um, and honestly, like, even my ex, he didn't fit that description as far as, like, you know, abs, workout, all that. It was it was never like that. Um, it's just, like, how it's old just is that he? I just wish that I... How old is how he? How old was he? How old is he? Now, 51. 51, that's still a bit of a gap between y'all. Is he black? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Is he married? No, divorced. Okay. And you say that you were the problem. Well, I I say that on my end. I own up to my my. Uh, well, ain't this my part rare? Now, isn't this rare? A female who actually looks at herself first and points the finger at herself first as the problem in her relationships. This is damn rare. I can count on one hand the number of females that I've asked that question to who said that they were the problem and they weren't pointing at the man first and saying, "Hey, I was the issue." Or at least we, I just want to talk about what the issue that I was. Now that's damn rare. And ladies, this is why young women defeat older women. You know why? Because older women can't be coached. Older women, I had a couple older women here tonight. They think they know it all. They've lived a life of nothing but stumble bum excuses, stumbling over one problem and incident and obstacle they made for themselves after another one mistake after another and refuse to acknowledge it let them tell it they didn't make any mistakes let them tell it the men screwed up let them tell it the men ain't doing enough it's so rare to find a female who actually takes accountability and says you know what let's start the discussion about me and my shortcomings that alone I got it. I'm, I'm going to have a little more sympathy with you than I would with the average female for that one alone. For that thing alone. Older females, ladies, because once y'all get in your late 20s, men don't want to fool with you anymore because you're uncoachable. Because you're walking in the room telling us you know every damn thing. And we're telling you all the mistakes you're making and you don't want to hear it. You just want us to tell you that you're okay anyway. That we need to get better at sucking up your mistakes. So, Lori, you have just gained a few brownie points simply by demonstrating that alone. I'm going to tell you what you need to do then, okay? Okay. I can say this much at least. Can I at least say the state you're in? Because it is important. Yes. Okay. Yes, um, now, she lives in Florida. And you all know what I'm going to say about Florida. I've had a few fitness chicks call me up. And by the way, black fit females in Florida, although Miami is slipping. For those of you on my patron, Miami is slipping. Got to get it. Got to get back right together, Miami. You starting to look like Louisiana. Can't have that. In any case, though, you're in Florida. But... I mean, Florida is a recreation state and it's going to be hard for you to find a man who's serious there because men don't come to Florida to get a bad broad, you know, because he's serious. He's going there to flex his accomplishments, to flex his resources, to flex his money. So it's going to be more difficult than that. If the guy you were talking to was serious, I strongly recommend you try to make some inroads I'm not too thrilled about that age difference, to be totally honest, but y'all are both grown people, and if you vibe with him, 
I mean, make it do what it do. But in any case, I am going to say here, you know, Florida is not really a place I would want to drop a young female looking for a serious man with resources. There's just, it's, it's a state that has set up its entire economy for the purposes of recreation and amusement from one end of the state to the other. And you already know this. So just out of curiosity, what, what are some states that you, uh, there, there are no, there are no there. states. There are no states you would go okay. to, but, um, DC, New York, uh, those would be the two that come to mind because black folk tend to move to DC on business. Now we'll give DC that when young black folk tend to move there, they tend to go there on business. Uh, in New York, everybody got to hustle. So in New York, you got to be about your business or you can't be there. So the economy kind of forces that in, in Florida, I can't tell you to go to Miami because nothing serious in Miami. I don't want to tell you to go to Orlando because Orlando is really a big ass theme park. And the further north you go, you know, once you start getting up into Tallahassee and Jacksonville and Pensacola, you know, if you're in if you're in that Jacksonville area, they want to be Orlando. And when you get into Tallahassee, you know, now you're like Southern Alabama. So I ain't dissing Tallahassee, but let's just call it what it is. Now I'm from Louisiana, so don't, don't get in your feelings up there in Tallahassee. Uh, but I'm like I say, as far as folk who are serious about that, that it's just not going to be a, it's not going to be a lot of fertile ground for that. It's, it's going to be like looking for a needle in a stack of needles. Because everybody is there. The only reason they want washboard abs is so they can have sex with people. And that's it. So really, like I say, that, that's going to be something to take a look at. I, I would not want you to be... Tampa is no different. Uh, somebody in the chat room talking about Tampa's good. No, it is not. It is, Florida is the same all over. It's a bunch of retire. The old folk are retirees... And the young people are, they, they want to get their money up, but they want to get their money up so they can play around too. It's just not a place I would have them do that at. It's just not a place I would have, it's just not a place I would recommend for you. But then again, you already know this. Yeah. You've already seen this. Um, I think Dallas is a good one also. A lot of black folk are moving to that Dallas area. I wouldn't send you to Houston. But uh, oh. I think Dallas is another good one. So I used to be able to say Atlanta, but Atlanta is so throwed the hell off right now. I was just from over there. I was just, I just moved back from there. Yeah, baby, you you the, the the fellas there got the fellas there wears panties better than you do. So I, yeah. I, I can't I can't really point you in that direction. So. As far as that's concerned, like I say, that's that's if you're talking about those places. But here's the real thing. The real thing is if you're on point, the men come to you. So what that really tells me is that you're not in the right places or looking in the right places. For example, how'd you meet your ex? Um, we met at a um it was a like a um event. Um you know, like a nice Nice gathering event. And that's another thing, too. I do think you're right on that because I don't go out or mingle much anymore for the past well, two there years you go. now. So I'm just not putting myself out there. And I haven't been doing that. Um, so that's probably what it is, too. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that. there you go right there. I mean, you're waiting for the men to come to you. And the only thing that's going to happen is guys online. And they're just going to go off of what they see. So that's not going to go... That that's not going to go very well. Yeah, and another thing too, I want to ask because um, I'm sure you see my picture. I do get a lot that I come off um, intimidating. Now I do know to to a man, a real man, probably not. But I'm just saying, as far as demeanor or appearance, I just want to know: um, do that? Do I give that off? I'm um, just by you. Um, 
you know, looking through my images. Can that play a role? I am. I was dread when we first got on the phone. I was gonna start with this, but you have made such an impression on me that I am so influenced to handle you with care. So I am not gonna be nearly as abrasive as I otherwise would be, but boy, I was afraid you were gonna force me to answer this. And you say for a real man, baby, it's gonna be for any man. And you're yeah. young and you're young, okay? So I want you to take this the right way, all right? Take it from somebody who I'm dispassionate. I ain't trying to sleep with you. And after what you're about to hear, there's never going to be a chance of it after what, you, what I'm about to tell you. So brace yourself, by the way. Okay. So if anybody thinks I'm trying to sleep with her after I get ready to say what I'm about to say, eh, kiss that goodbye. But um, what I am going to say is certainly I can understand that. From the neck down, you are a nine. From the neck up, you're a four. I give you an average, that makes you a six. So, you have done the right thing. You took your positives that you did have and you turned the damn volume up to 11. And that is exactly what you are supposed to do. You are supposed to, if you're dealing with a handicap and dealing with a negative, you're supposed to turn the damn volume up on your positives all the way. You have a good attitude. You have a feminine demeanor. You are coachable. You are trying to learn. That's, I mean, that's, that's great. So for everything else, you're right where you need to be. You're right where you need to be. But you're young. And I knew you were not, I knew your people were not from the States because I don't know who in the world been helping you get your fashion game together. And I'm talking about like makeup and stuff, but like the eyelashes looking like spider legs, baby, back off of that, back off of that. Your hair game, like I say, you, you need to hook up with them Dominicans so they can help you get that together and stuff because and I'm saying it. it's obvious that you're wearing somebody else stuff that you think works for somebody else. So you got the Cardi B earrings, you know, and that that's not that's not as a man looking at you as a perfect stranger and be, me being sympathetic, I can clearly see this ain't this this wasn't your idea. You looked at somebody in a magazine or an Instagram page somewhere and you cherry picked those things off of them and driving down the real estate that's the thing that, that that's hurting you. So these are things that can be fixed. These are things that can be addressed. But somewhere along the line, you've gotten some, and I'm sure they were trying to help. Or maybe these were your ideas and they just executed what you told them. But what I'm saying is, baby, you don't need to go off and, uh, you don't have to go off and, 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 and cherry pick this stuff all looking like something from Instagram that ain't gonna work looking like these celebrities that's not gonna work be you be you but we definitely need to have you know a situation like that that's that's what you need to go for be you stop trying to be some and I know y'all are in so many of your parents left you alone that you are informed by celebrities informed by television informed by media damn that be you get rid of the fake eyelashes don't overdo it with the damn makeup if you have skin issues get off your ass go see a dermatologist and resolve them stop trying to cover them up or contour resolve them be done with it if our teeth game ain't where it needs to be go see an orthodontist and get it fixed what good does it do for you to have a banging body and our teeth ain't looking as good as the rest of us so it's not rocket science go get it fixed go get it taken care of i know a bunch of females cubans puerto ricans dominicans shout out cardi b she did it and it's not about running you down or anything it's about acknowledging okay this is a weak spot okay we got the ability to fix it so fix it so that the rest of you matches but don't sit up here and tell yourself well if i just bang this body to death it'll be great what i'm saying is if you have the ability to, to tweak those numbers more 
why not do it? Okay. Now, when you say about the hair, should, do you, do you mean let it grow out? Yes. Or, yes. I mean, okay, I don't want to go too far into too okay. much. You're saying too much. I don't want to go into too much detail, but my short answer okay. to that is yes. And you already, you probably were already inkling to this, but yes, let it grow out. It don't need to be down your back. You don't need that. But the, the stud look... And I know that works better for competitions and certain other things and certainly for working out. But the stud look, I mean, for you it's more functional, but it just makes you look more studdish. And that's not really what you want. And I can tell you paid some money for that thing too. And you've been keeping it up and everything, and that, but that's not the issue. That The issue is it doesn't go well with you. That's the real problem. Is functional, and I know why you did it. I'm not downing that. I'm just saying it's not flattering. It isn't. Okay. That that look works on somebody else. Now that would work on a Nicole Murphy, or uh, what's his name, Terry Crews's wife. That doesn't work on you. So it looks good on somebody. It just doesn't look good on you. And especially once you pop your muscles out and stuff, you know, you're, 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 you're taking us in a different direction. It's impressive. It's just not impressive the way you, you were hoping it would be. Now on competition night, oh, on competition night, you're killing the game. But you need to understand we're the real world. We're not competition night. So what works on a competition stage doesn't work out here. What you're selling them on that stage is a fantasy. It, 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 that doesn't translate over here. Do you see what I mean? Yes, sir. Okay. So definitely, like I say, in regard to those things there, uh, in reality, I don't really have a whole lot to, uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say, um, negative otherwise or any a lot of a lot of critique to give to it but yes as far as the presentation is concerned yes you would do yourself a world of favors to address those things and they can be addressed now whether you wish to or not is a different matter are they going to be free no they are not will they be worth it absolutely And I think that you are going to get tremendous returns coupled with some of these other tweaks you could make as far as, you know, listen, you know, because if you really want a man's attention, show him how well you listen, you couple those together. And I think you're going to get a lot better appreciating appreciation on your returns. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh apply some of those um, advices. Thank you. Well, other than that, did you have anything else you wanted to ask me? Um, no, that's, I believe that's all. Thank you so much for that. Um, I wish you the best and thank you again. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. I expect to hear from you. Okay, thank you. Bye. You take care. No, I did not handle her badly. I think she was a perfect example. I think she was a perfect example of why it is that young women force older women out. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. She would be worth the investment. At 26, she's worth the investment. She's got a lot more ro runway in front of her. If a fella was going to pay for all that stuff, it would be a whole lot better to pay for it for her than to tell yourself you're going to go off and go pay for it here. What's the return on the investment for getting hair and teeth and nails 
and everything else, what do you, where's the return on your investment here? How much of a return are you going to get on that investment here? Ladies, you waste this time at your own peril. You waste it at your own peril. She was a perfect example of doing it right. She didn't wait till she was 40 and then call me talking about, can I throw this buzzer beater? Can I get a Hail Mary? She called at the right time. She called while it still matters. She didn't call me with three kids, student loan debt, crow's feet, and a bunch of emotional baggage in tow. She called at the right time. To the older ladies listening and getting into her age, she's heading in that direction. Yeah, get yourself ready to gather your winnings and leave the casino. Prepare yourself to leave. If you are new here to the business, we'd like to welcome you to the program that laid the foundation upon which all of your red pill, MGTOW, high value posers, alpha male idiots, wannabes, and all the other folk have ripped off and stolen everything that they're going to be saying to you next week. You'll be hearing it here tonight. If you haven't clicked that red subscribe button, go ahead and do so now. YouTube does have us under a shadow ban, so it's important that if you like this program, go ahead and share this with other people. That's the way you want to go ahead and get the word spread around about it. So we're definitely very glad to have you all with us here tonight. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program, either on Cash App, PayPal, or Super Chat. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. To my girl, Myra, we appreciate that. My man, Jean, I appreciate you back up in here. And to everyone who has supported the program tonight, thank you very much for doing so. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you.